All right, and we're live, and you're making coffee. I like it, testing the coffee out. Perfect. All right, you got to unmute yourself because there you go. Oh, yeah, we're good. Yeah, so talk. I am I am excited to have you on our show. I've talked to you on other shows. Correct. Not, not this one, not this specific one. The thing I'm not excited about tonight is that Kofi is not going to be doing this, but that's kind of cool, too, because it's both of us. Well, we're – yeah, we can talk. Plenty. We're left on our own. I mean, now yeah. there's really no filter to where this conversation is going to go, which, you know, last time he kind of kept us in check, but this time there's really no boundaries. I mean, we're completely unsupervised. Right. And I I, I like where that's going to go. If we were at a convention. Uh, I, I was going to say, I met you at C2E2 and you were, <laughs> you, you, you weren't necessarily the most, you were a lot of fun, by the way. Oh, most, yeah. Right? But you I, weren't I, like professional wolf car <laughs> you were like con having fun hanging out wolf car yeah I was a loves piece of beer under the arm coffee in the blood yep let's go let's get this going yeah yep mm-hmm. cool well thank you for having me back and yeah uh, let's... it's been a it's been a wild i'm i, I don't remember the last time we did a, a show like this it's been at least a few months but god a lot's happened it was um, three months or four months ago but this is the first time you've been on this show. So Correct. let's have people, like, if you could, just tell people where they can find you. I know it's all the same, but I want them to be able to look you up now as opposed to, you know, at the end of the show so sure. they can stalk you. Fair enough. Uh, and I'll make it short and sweet, but sure. uh, my, my website is talkcustom.com, exactly how it's spelled. All of my social media is just at talkcustom, one word. Um and that's Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube. Um, I'm most known on my YouTube channel for my sewing tutorials. And I also am the marketing coordinator for TNT Cosplay Supply. So I do all of TNT's um, uh, YouTube videos and social media there as well. Oh, I yeah. got a bunch of chat showing up on screen, but I can't Sorry, see. I was, oh, it's in comments. That's I where, okay, comments. I got yes, it. I, I see you guys. Yeah. Abraham's just um, giving us the, you know, everybody, they're all excited. And, I'm excited and too. Not. I mean, we just announced it this morning at like 10 and. Yeah. Am I allowed to swear on this channel? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Yes, Holy you are. shit I'm, was the yes, response. Yes, Absolutely crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I mean, last it's, time it's it been amazing. an explosive reaction. Um, and like last year, we, we got a great response. We only, you know, we announced it three weeks before the actual <laughs> show and, and we got 300 submissions and well over a thousand people watched it. And now we're doing this, giving people five months heads up to make something new. And we have, you know, three times as many judges and our committee has grown and, like you were part of the show last year, uh, yeah, yeah. which was a lot of fun to end the show with you and your shop guys dancing, which was fun. Um, so we made our announcement. Now we have to do, um, we have a, a crowdfunding campaign we're going to run because this yeah. is a community run event uh, and it's you know run by the community for the community. So we've got all these amazing uh, branded incentives for people and merch and all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm going to start on the website tonight because I was <laughs> expecting <laughs> such a big reaction and people are asking me all kinds of questions. So I, I yeah. got, I got, yeah. I got, a, you know, I got a couple questions for you about okay, it. Yeah, we'll, we'll so talk I'm, I'm going to get into this, but let's, let's just talk about it. Let's go. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So I didn't look at the rules a whole lot because I don't think there were a lot of rules out there for it. But we'll, we'll, we'll recycle some of the rules from mm-hmm. last year, but things are going to yeah. change a little bit. Um, so I gotta, I gotta ask you got a lot of really, really, really talented, awesome people on that roster already. And we were just talking before this, like I'm happy to, to be involved as, as, as far as like just donating some prizes. Um, but last year it was like, what, like a two hour, three hour event or something like that. Like, well, like four and a half, a four and a half. Yeah. It was a while. Like I, we were in the middle of like a field day, right? Like it was Quaid's birthday. So he had like eight di- and I know like, like 50 different events for us to play that day. So I didn't get a chance to watch much of it, but I okay. was literally would ch- I would, I would check in every so often during this and be like, Oh my God, there's still, I was just trying to figure out like who the winner was. At the end. And then you guys posted it all. And I ended up like putting it on while I was working and just watched the whole thing. Um, nice. Wow. Is it going to be four hours again? You think? No. Or, so, yeah. well, it's, it's hard to like last year we, we scheduled it. Like mm-hmm. we didn't script the show. The whole thing is unscripted. Like, yeah, we have our finalists yeah, and we do right. prejudging and deliberations and all that stuff. But like, we don't have a rehearsal. Like we don't, 
fucking tell people what they're going to do or say. Like, sure. things just happen. Like, Ted said he was going to kill someone because they were too good of a cosplayer. And, you know, <laughs> someone spilled coffee or ice cream on themselves. Yeah. Like, shit yeah. happened or whatever. That makes it real, though. Yeah, that makes which, it real. which is great. Um, yeah. But <clears throat> so... Yeah, we, we, we scripted it to be about two hours, maybe a little over, and it ended up being like four and a half because, like, but no one complained except for the oh, European yeah, yeah, yeah. folks because it was like <laughs> three in the morning there, and they were like, dude, I got to go to bed. Um, yeah. But we're going to do it. Uh, so just a couple of quick things. We're going to start it two hours earlier this year, so it's going to be at five central. Um, and then yeah. um, what was the other thing? Um. This is going to be a masterclass only competition this year um, because last year the intermediate category was yeah. so high quality. There's no reason for us to have an intermediate category. Plus, we had like over 300 submissions, which we were not expecting. Um, there were so a lot of submissions. And like, I know people who submitted and they like show me what they submitted and then they didn't even get in. And right. don't get me wrong. I totally understand like how it worked that way, but people were going nuts for it, like all out across the board. And I really, I really do think that it's because we one, the people we have involved in your team that have involved in is amazing. And then secondly, people really do need this right now, right? They're used they do, to they do. And I'm I was when I saw it come up again, I'm like, fuck yeah. Like I hope <laughs> when you do this for forever, right? Like even after other ones come on. Because there's not a lot of people who can get to them all the time. No, there's you're right. Definitely people who can't compete against all those different people. Yeah, and right? international, and some people, you yeah. know, like this. Yeah. This next year is going to be tough. Even even if a vaccine comes out and all that stuff, we don't have to talk about oh, COVID yeah. and all that. But sure, sure. Even if that happens, and there are cons, there's still going to be a demand for people to be able to to compete from Australia or Slovenia and interact with people from all over the world and showcase what they made um and something that was really special we did last year which it's kind of a last minute decision i made was all the people that that entered and didn't get in as a finalist i made a, a whole like it was like a 38 minute long video slideshow of every person that submitted just so they could get some screen time that's awesome so we I got to show like screen. yeah we got to show like 289 people throughout the entire thing and give away like 18 prizes or something. And we had, I think 17 sponsors. Like it was just, it was a party, man. It was a celebration. It wasn't just a contest. And that's what we're going to keep alive this year. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, even talking to you guys beforehand last year, um, just all the different people that were involved, all the, the effort you're putting in. And I know that last year you did it really quick. So hopefully you have a little bit more breather time, but you rocked it for, for the fast as it went. You, I know you did a lot yourself and like there were a couple other people who were really involved, but the, the editing was good. The, like the production value of it was all good. And then you went back and cut what, like an hour and a half. Cut yeah, we, we, on I did a, yeah. I, I did a, I did a cut. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, look at all these people. We got Kira um, who's been, Famously making a lot of yoga pants. Uh, we got. Yeah, she uh, wants me to talk to you about something you're, you're sewing tonight. You want to talk about yoga I, pants? We, we, can her, we can slice 10 minutes to talking about yoga pants if you want. Um, she needs to just get on here and ask questions and then we can talk about just it. Just get her on camera. Yeah, we'll, we'll do that. <laughs> and yeah. Plexi, Allie, it was really good to meet you. Thank you for coordinating all this. And I know yeah, you yeah. probably didn't do shit and this was all you. <laughs> he just gets to look at on camera with coffee and. Mm. whatever so um but yeah so t tell me about you what's what's been going on with you since uh thanksgiving ah, you know since since we last talked well you know what uh, a lot of the same a lot of the different right like i feel like we're still doing this show which is fantastic um got to now Allie's involved right so now right. We're, we're we just released a new website last, yesterday not yesterday last week uh, so there's a lot going on there. Right. Uh, the guys are all pretty excited. We have a lot of just, you know, builds we're doing. Um, there's not a lot of plans for conventions yet. So I'm just keeping no. my ear to the ground. And don't get me wrong. I don't want to go to any conventions with the way it is right now. But Oh, yeah. That's Very few big... people would even show up. And... <laughs> yeah. 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 And I would go. Be something that's going to definitely, um, you know, mix things up again. 
right? I think we've like we've gotten into the okay. Well, this is the orders that have come in. These are the commissions that we're doing. These are the people we need to talk to. All that we've gotten that flow, which is great. And then when conventions hit again, we're just gonna it's gonna be crazy again. But I'm, it's a good kind of crazy, crazy that I missed. But I, like you were saying, uh, a year, two, maybe. Something like that until everybody's really comfortable. Maybe, maybe you last. We'll see which point. I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not a fucking scientist or anything, but I'm, <laughs> I'm predicting by the end of the year, like October, November, December, it's possible there's going to be some cons, but For sure. there's going to be a long economic recovery period where people got to, you know, get caught up with rent, bills, mortgage, you know, yeah. debt, stuff like that. And they're not going to have the cash to go and, fly to BlizzCon and spend two grand or three grand at DragonCon or whatever, even though that's what they would love to do. But, you know, people got to take care of their business, their family, yeah. you know, whatever. So con attendance will be lower for a while and it'll be. That, sorry. No, go I, ahead. I think that it will be lower in that respect. But I also think that the second a big one comes back and people feel safe, like C2E2, Emerald City, yeah. Um, you know, actual comic con or dragon con that, that'll, that attendance will be up. Right. Like it's all it really gets down to is the second like that, con, people will. Be, yeah. Oh, people will be at dragon con. Be fine. They'd be there now if they fine. let them. Like, yeah. They Emerald City's going to be fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, the sad thing is a lot of small local cons that people love, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. there's a shit ton of them. Like I'm not from Dallas, but there's a ton of them here in Dallas. I, mm -hmm. I live in Dallas now. And they're just not going to exist anymore because they couldn't afford to survive what happened. Um, so we'll see. But uh, something that I kind of did because there wasn't cons and I was going to visit family is I, I don't know if you knew about this, but um, yeah, I, I saw. Go ahead. Talk yeah. I, I did this, uh, this Midwestern, um, like road trip video tutorial tour yeah. on behalf of both Talk Custom and TNT Cosplay Supply, where I stayed with the Egg Sisters and Tim mm -hmm. from HDC and Paisley and Glue. Maggie is just amazing. And I yeah, stayed with yeah. Shadow Ninja. I got a tattoo up in Minnesota from Capit Tattoo. These are all people I know from Twitch or cons or cosplayers. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet with all these people and I filmed videos and like we did all kinds of amazing things. And we're all fucking isolating nerds. So there was no threat of like contamination really. Um, and we had a blast. We made a bunch of good content. We had fun and we got to teach people some cool stuff. So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing a lot of this year is just more yeah. content creation, more collaborations, yeah. whether it's virtual, like we're doing right now or mm -hmm. an online contest or, you know, some people will be coming to, to stay at my house and film with me or vice, you know, I might go be doing other stuff. So, um, it's just kind of like, you got to look at the situation that you're dealt with that we're all in and figure out, okay, we all know what we can't do, but what can we do? Right. Definitely. definitely. And, and there's a lot of really, there's a lot of things that we're going to do now that we're going to continue to do like this tour that you're talking about throughout whatever area you probably, you could do that, you know, every year for the next 10 years, even well after this is over. I want to. Um, we also don't know how actual much it will be over because there's other things that could come up and other random things. So like this show that we're doing right now, I don't plan on stopping, right? Oh, yeah, no. I love this. And, and I, I wouldn't normally be able to hang out with you on a Monday afternoon or Monday night, right? Because you live in Dallas and I'm in Lafayette, right. Indiana. So even though we scheduled this awesome. like three months yeah. ago. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've been I looking at this in my calendar, but... Um, but like this, this year has been wonderful. I've, I've actually gotten closer to people as a result of circumstance because I talk on the phone with a lot of people. Um, yeah. Turn, turn lemons into lemonade. Um, yeah. But I've, I've talked to so many amazing people on the phone for hours and hours and done collaboration stuff and talked ideas. And um, like we have, a, we've, we've had a great opportunity and, some people have just been absolutely deflated, which I totally understand that, you know, like, like I personally haven't made a lot this year, but I've made a lot of connections and content mm -hmm. and I get a lot of sponsorships from companies that are excited about the yeah. content. I'm, so like, it's just been different, you know? Um, but when you're positive and you're looking to make good connections, like anything can happen. And when the world opens up again, 
it's going to be a wild experience. And it's going to be like this weird, like we're all fucking lazy and we're overweight <laughs> and we're tired. And I'm going to go to my first con and I'm going to be like, my feet hurt within, you know, a few hours and I'm just going to want to sit um, just because <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to being on my feet, but you know, yeah. that's, we're all dealt with that. Um, and, it, and it's also going to be different too, because um, you know, people aren't used to, not just seeing each other, but I'm used to seeing people actually hug each other. Right. Right. So there's like, now I've, I've encountered people that it's like, they'll put their hand out to hit, shake my hand. And I'm like, eh, I'm not kind of doing that. Or maybe I am. And I'm like, yep. all right, I should, I just shook your hand, but you want some hand sanitizer right now. And literally I've gone over and like gotten the hand sanitizer at the same time. Like right after he shook somebody's hand, yep. it's just awkward. Right. So like, at what point do we continue to do those things? Or I guess, you know, we'll, we will do those things eventually, but will people be as comfortable with it? And I want, I honestly want, I want that shot. I want that shot right here. Oh yeah. Multiple times. And that shot right there, I'm just going to just run around hugging people. That's dude. I'm, I'm with that's, you. That's, that's like, and if, if you run out of people to hug, come back to me. Cause yeah, I'm, oh, I will. I'm one affectionate that. motherfucker at cons. And <laughs> I, I read something funny that said something like, it was just some like throwaway Instagram post, but it was like, remember the days when we used to like, put our fingers in shared bowling balls and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, put our hand in a, a basket full of nachos that we were sharing with our friend and just not care or think oh, yeah. about it. Um, yeah. And I miss those days. Plus I miss bowling cause I'm from the Midwest, but um, anyway, those days will come back. But in the meantime, it's just up to each of us to stay positive. And if we can't stay connected to positive people and, that's a big reason we're doing this contest again. It's a big reason I do a lot of collaborations. Big reason I'm on your show right now. Plus, you're yeah. just like one of the most handsome dudes ever. And well, yeah, yeah, that's that's really what it is. Right. I feel uh, like we make <laughs> each other look better. Sitting well, yeah, you're like other. you're like the longer hair, longer hair, longer beard version. No glasses. We're basically not the same person at all. But hey, we both have a lot of hair on our face. So that's How old are you, James? <laughs> I'm 39. How old are you? I'm 36. So there, I could be your dad. No, I couldn't. No, I, I hope still, not. No, if we're, you were, we're, if we're you were getting laid when you were no, three, then yes, you could be my dad. But no, I know so many people that I'm like, yeah, I, I really could be your dad. And that's, uh, I mean, it's fine. I mean, honestly, I like a lot of <laughs> younger people and people my age too. Yeah. No, we're, we're in that sweet spot where we're still <laughs> respected by the young folks that can look up to us as <laughs> artists. And people yeah. our age and older can still respect us for, you know, being active, having energy and being involved. Well, um, I don't know if it's going to come up, man. I need to do my hair today, but I have gray hair now. And I that got, is helpful. Yeah. it's super helpful. I got like um, two white beard hairs and I'm fine with that. But people, people see a little bit of that gray or you look a little older. Or maybe if I uh, like grow out my beard. No, you look great. I'm just going to spend the rest of this interview just, just hitting <laughs> on you and complimenting you for... Oh. Just now it's right. awkward. Now it's awkward. I just I said I was gonna hug you and then you start hitting on me. Okay, I see how it is. Mm. Kairos, Kairos I, I miss, here, I, miss so. uh, I miss hanging out with people, you know. And yeah, you. I had actually Plexi was in chat earlier. She was supposed to fly in to do some video shoots with me in Dallas literally on Friday this week, and the state of Maryland or whatever put a travel ban unless it's an emergency. So yeah. we had to reschedule, which sucks big ass. Um the UK is Locked down now. Um, right. I, I have a couple friends there. They were just talking. Yeah, same thing. They're, they're locking everything down. Yep. So, anyway, you know, hopefully you live in a decent city where you know a handful of people or at least one person that you can do something with. But yeah. Anyway, I I just I really hope that people are starting to see some kind of a light at the end of the tunnel and they're getting excited about making stuff again and there has to be a point where people start feeling this enthusiasm for getting back into what they love, you know, even before cons happen and, and that's up to each person individually. And you yeah, know, I was you about might, to say. yeah, like you can do what you can do and we can do podcasts and we can do mm -hmm. virtual contests and we can stream and you know, make tutorials and whatever, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's up to each individual to decide, like, am I ready to, to do it? You know? And well, a lot of people are doing other things to find that community, right? So they're going to video games or 
I mean, I know my wife's been playing a lot of Pokemon Go, and she was just saying that she likes the community of Pokemon Go, right? And I realized that, like, that's a big reason I like cosplay. Like, really, it's not It's not so much, I mean, yeah, I like making this stuff, don't get me wrong, but I'm really here for the friends, and I'm here for the, like, the just stories and the adventure. That's that's really what I want. Um, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, we're getting that in the shop, and I'm getting that, like, through here. And I'm blessed because I literally have shop full of guys who I get to hang out with too. But you're right. I, and I've also talked to other people on this show specifically who are like, ah, I might be done. I mean, they've, they've really? really said, yeah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm done. Maybe I'm not because they found other stuff, right? And they found other people. I've, I've seen, I've seen like, a handful of people in the last, yeah. you know, since, you know, lockdown say like, you know what, like, I think I'm going to give up cosplay like for good. And mm -hmm. some of them meant it and some of them didn't, but sure. Um, I think people did that even before lockdown, actually. But oh yeah, yeah, people. Um, I, there's a couple people who say that all the time. Yeah. But now, shit. I mean, this is a total side, whatever. But <laughs> yeah, I've seen yeah. So many, so many breakups and divorces and people cheating on each other and like this year has just been fucked. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, it has like, been. It has that all going on, people. but then people are like breaking Ooh. up with cosplay. Yeah. Um, you know, which is crazy. Yeah. So, so yeah. cosplay. Um, you know. A lot of people talk about all the drama that's in it. What I don't think is happening, or what what I think will happen, I guess, is the fact the fact that other people will go and they'll find other hobbies and other things, and then they're going to get into drama there too, and they're going to realize it's not the cosplay; it's just communities of people have drama. <clears throat> that's part of it. I have, I have a lot of weird here. opinion about drama. Like, uh, I, yeah, sure, hit me with your drama opinion. No, it's Please. just like I I must be so blind to it because I. I either don't care or I don't notice or I don't look for it or, sure. but like, you know, I'm, I'm not a very smart individual, right? You know, I, I know how to run my business and pay taxes and do all the things that I do. And I'm good at editing and playing the piano and some weird shit, but like, I don't spend time looking up negativity and also like all my social media and everything I put out, whether it's, you know, videos, content, streams, Twitter, like everything, like is a reflection of my company's, my, my company, my brand. Sure. And Talk Custom as a company doesn't have an opinion on, you know, politics or, yeah. you know, all these things. like I have opinions and sure. I tell them to people that I, I trust and I am happy to share them with. But my company has no place expressing things that would otherwise pull me into public controversy or drama, not because I'm afraid it's going to hurt my brand, but because it just doesn't make sense. Like you don't see the CEO of McDonald's, you know, talking about who they voted for. And yeah. like, I, I don't know, whatever that, that's my opinion. And if you guys disagree, that's, that's fine. I respect that. But I just, I don't, I don't really see a lot of drama cause I just don't look for it. I suppose. I mean, and that's the thing too. There's, any 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 point in my cosplay career, there's been drama. Sometimes it's about dumb stuff. Sometimes it's about not that dumb stuff, right? right. And it, if there's, if it's about the dumb stuff, a lot of times it's stuff that I don't really notice until somebody brings up to my attention, like, "Hey, do you hear this thing? Is this?" And the thing is, um, a lot of it depends on like the it's just friends group. It's friends dramas. Like so and so was dating so-and-so and then they broke up and now they're dating this other person and that's the drama so it's like yeah, that's, that's that, that happens happen. uh every right, like, every competition every cosplay contest yeah, has drama yes, whether it's yeah, definitely uh, behind the scenes or it's public so that's that's a given um but yeah so um, i guess that's what i'm saying it's not it's not like a crazy um it's not nearly as intense as like 2020 was with some of their like the global things that were happening so the other thing about it is now and I, okay. I'm gonna switch subjects, and this is yeah, just a random talk show. But I, I think that the people that have gone through some shit usually are normally some of my favorite people because <laughs> they understand, right? <laughs> and I, think I love that you said that. Just and, and just I think like 2020 in general, like the, the amount of drama and bullshit and everything, not bullshit, not drama, even just like the amount of bullshit, the amount of there's a pandemic, and I'm not saying we're past it either, but all that stuff, all these people, it's it's an awful situation. It is but when we see everybody on the other side of this, 
they are going to not care as much about whether some shirt is blue or purple or whatever, right? Like the small things are not going to matter. I hope hopefully, because that's, hopefully not. that's and probably I, I my think favorite thing about people movie. will react the way you're talking about. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, when when you deprive people of what they love for so long, you know, not that anyone's doing it, but just the state of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When cons open up, yeah, you're going to see a lot more people being more affectionate and you know, um, just being excited to be part of you know, the community again. And we're, we're doing our best virtually as, as we can do it and whatever. But um, I, I'm really excited to see what, not just for the cosplay community, but for every community, you know? And, um, you know, even families haven't had the privilege of being close this year. Like that's that's a big obstacle for families to not, like I, I, I spent Christmas alone um, yeah. Playing Warcraft. I started playing fucking Warcraft. I got so <laughs> bored this year. I haven't done that in like seven years. And uh, I imagine they probably had a, a pickup of, of, of participants playing. It was kind of nice, right? if I'm being honest. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just, you know, it's we, we've all had to adapt, and and <clears throat> to be honest, I, I worked so hard this year on so many things that I could that they weren't tangible things. They were all, it was content or sponsorship deals or you know behind the scenes emails or NDA projects. I, I just couldn't talk, talk about or share. Right. Right. But I worked so hard on so many different things that I wasn't really in the public eye and I don't really care cause I don't want to be popular or famous. Um, but I was tired by the time like black Friday was over and TNT <laughs> sales were done. I was yeah, like, yeah. man, I just want to sit on my fucking couch and watch, fucking green Bay Packer football and play video games. And that's, that's kind of what I did. And it was, it was kind of nice. Um, but, um, yeah, I think that Christmas really hit us harder this year. We had Halloween, which is obviously super busy for us. Black Friday was kind of busy for us, but we're small yeah. business. So it wasn't crazy. And then like Christmas, people all wanted stuff for Christmas. And, I mean, I guess that was into Black Friday, right? That's, that's when you order your Christmas stuff. But yeah, so luckily we had a lot of sales going out, but it did not, it wasn't chill, right? Like I, I was kind of hoping it would be. Um, but I mean, don't get me wrong. It's it's good both ways. I I think I, I really am excited because I have a couple adventures kind of coming up that aren't, like they're not, Going to cons, so they're they're right. COVID safe like or whatever. Camping I need to I need to get out of the house. Yeah, like I need yeah, to, yeah. I need to go and help do that. And like everybody needs to. And I feel like that's across the board that like people miss adventures, and it's a different kind of like a lot of yeah. people who are going to conventions were used to that was there every other weekend or every weekend or every I don't know month they would do that, and now we have to get, like switch that around. And that's something I just haven't done. Don't get me wrong. It's also nice to be at the house and it's nice to sleep in my own bed and see the kids and all that stuff all the time. Yeah. Too. Well. Yeah. I I don't I don't need adventures. You know, I <laughs> I went to the pharmacy and to the tobacco shop today. That was an adventure for me. I hadn't left the house in days, so I didn't really care. But I don't. I'm not. I'm outgoing when I go to cons. I fucking love cons, but <laughs> otherwise, I just love being at home, designing stuff, making stuff, editing talking on the phone with good people, doing stuff like this, planning mm -hmm. events. Um, and um, yeah, so like, you know, we're all different and we all have different, you know, social thresholds that we need filled. And some people are really socially awkward. Some people aren't. And, um, you know, like uh, th this year has been particularly hard on people with, um, you know, depression, anxiety, uh, addiction, uh, and or any other mental illness or affliction. Um, and uh, this this year, my, my primary focus was maintaining my mental health because um, that's, that's a big deal for me. I, I worked in mental health for nine years and the last couple of years I struggled and I, I really focused on getting professional support and help and thank the Lord that I did um, because I got through this year you know, pretty smoothly. And that's, that's, I'm always a big advocate for that. And, um, and talking about drama, like 
you know, 90, 99.5% of people aren't dramatic people. We're all positive. We yeah, love, definitely. you know, making stuff and sharing and learning and, you know, going to cons and whatever. And there's always a handful of people that are just wonderful at stirring up negativity and <laughs> they, they get a lot of attention and that's fine. Um, but of all the communities I've been part of, um, like the creative community, artistic community, or the cosplay community has been, we'll just say the lowest percentage of people that do that. And, I agree. Um, typically when someone in our cosplay prop maker artistic world is just identified as someone who's overly negative, they don't really last very long in the community. And it's because a lot of us have, like you said this earlier, a lot of us have been through hell, like way before COVID, like, sure. you know, I, I'm a recovering alcoholic with three documented suicide attempts and I've been to military school and I was in a psych ward. I've been to jail three times, you know, like I've, I've been through some wild shit and I don't have time or the threshold to put up with people telling me that I'm not good enough or that, you know, or seeing other people shit on other new cosplayers for not, yes. you know, like, Oh, let me bring that up. That. Let me, I, I need to, I need to say something again. Please go. And I want you to tell people this too. Um, I know that it seems very obvious, but you know, what makes community more toxic is when you teach people who are new to it to be toxic. Meaning that if somebody's a new person coming into cosplay or anything really, and the veterans or the people who are, you know, are already there come in and they're like mean to them or they bully them or whatever, they're toxic to them, right? Those people are going to one, leave, or they're going to stay and then they're going to think that's what you should do. Yeah, they're going to emulate like, that, that's especially the way if it comes from someone who's well known in the community, which is which can be very dangerous long term. Um, right. Which I actually I think is a big reason that like you said before, why where cosplay land is actually less toxic, I feel like, than a lot of places, because it is a collaborative, hey, how'd you build that? Hey, what'd you do with this? Oh, hey, look how cool that is. Oh, cool, you're you're the Mandalorian. I love the Mandalorian. You're right. you know, your cable, I built I built a cable too. And like I love I love being yeah. cable, but I don't want to try to like you know, claim cable as the only like. Oh man, no! I want, I want right. to run around. The reason I go to conventions, I want to run everywhere, and I want to see all the damn costumes, right? And I want to see what, how they did it. I want to interact with them. Um, so that's way different than other communities I've been in, which is very competitive, right? Like Magic: yep. Gathering, I played that for a while, and you just sit down. And you're like, "Hi, I want to beat you right now. Get the like, basically, like I'm going to shuffle my cards, play out the right cards. You're in my way, trying to right. win. Yeah. And basically just not worry not i don't even want to know you mm. right? i'm not going to ask you your that, name. that does happen that. in competitive cosplay and, and <laughs> i will say bit, a little like, bit a little bit and there's there's not, definitely not, a lot more respect yes. than what you're saying but at yes. least it like brings people like it it elevates the level and quality and like it mm -hmm. that's competitive cosplay is what makes some of the builders the best in the world sure. um, whether they're influencers or they teach or not, like, you know, I can, I, I can think of a bunch of people and I'm sure you can too, that are just fucking phenomenal world-class competitive cosplayers and they live for it. And I, I tried it, you know, I, I competed a few times in some masterclass things and I was just honored to be part of it. I didn't, I didn't want to win. Um, yeah, Freddie, I I'm, I'm with you there for sure. But, um, some people love yeah. it, some people don't. And uh, like, no. I'd rather be a handler or a judge or a, a host than. Right, right, right. But, uh, like, I love being in the green room at events like that because that's where you <laughs> meet the most amazing people oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you tell funny stories. And, like, God, I've got so many funny stories of backstage at C2E2 or TwitchCon or, you know, wherever. And, like, that shit's fucking hilarious. And most of yeah. us, we don't care who wins. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. and we're I mean, excited, you know. But, and the other thing, like, this community is so tight now that like all the competitors, we know all the judges, we're friends with them. They're friends with us. Like we're all friends with each other. Like we don't, it's, it's hilarious. And then there's all these just like viewers that might not even know about cosplay <laughs> that watch this thinking like, Oh, these guys probably fucking hate each other. And this is cutthroat while backstage. We're all like, you know, giving high fives and dancing and hugs and whatever. Um, Oh, thank you, Abraham. I, I don't know Abraham, so I, I appreciate the compliment. Um, 
Yeah. yeah. So, okay, let's read what Ali is saying here too. It, it is very beautiful that people are sharing. It is. And, and that's the thing. And getting to that same point of high level competitive cosplay, or I guess competitive cosplay, sure, that there is, that's, there's a place for that. People, right. Right. Not for everybody. And if, if you really, choose to participate, yeah, there's a place for yeah. that. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but you don't have to do it. Yeah, or you if you just want to you want to wear something fun and yeah. party in the lobby of a hotel after a con, you can do that too. And you can look like Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist while you're doing yeah. it. You know, and that's yeah. fucking great. Like that's the stuff I love. And and I was a handler for Casey Renee who competed last year and she won, I think, third place regional, which was I was so excited for her, and that was fun. Um or there's people that just show up at cons in jeans and a hoodie because they love the people. At other people, or they bring their kids to take pictures with other cosplayers, or you know, whatever. I gotta say, I always was like, hey, I don't understand why you come to a convention and not wear a costume, right? But now, especially like the the busier I get and the older I get, I'm like, man, I would like. I would skip the entire con and just go to the after party at C2E2 if I might do that. But don't get me wrong. I, that's just my favorite part. But I love the floor. I love walking the floor. I love I the do too. And, and doing silly stuff, getting the stories and costumes is amazing as well. But I also totally understand now why people just go and hang out. It's, it's funny. Like all the cons, mm -hmm. like, like Dragon Con or C2E2 or all kind of like, I, I was thinking about this the other day. Like Dragon Con, I'll stand right by the elevators by the Marriott the whole fucking weekend because that's where all our guys are. Or, You're that guy. At C2E2, oh, I, I, I stood right by HDC's booth the <laughs> whole weekend because that's where all the cosplayers hung out. And then I'd go get hot dogs and bring them back and hang out with whoever yeah. was around. And it was great because that's where our people are. Like, I. I don't, I, I don't buy a bunch of merch. I usually buy a souvenir, but like, sure. And take pictures or whatever. And kids want to actually kids are fucking terrified. I, I love kids, but the big, tall, bearded, deep voice guy thing, you know, <laughs> unless I'm wearing a helmet, like, like they're, they're not yeah. into it. You, that's the thing. That's one of the big things. I don't like my helmets. People are always like, like helmets. I don't like my helmet. face. Yeah. I, I can't emote. You can't hear, you can't talk. They can't see your face, you know, and, and kids yeah. get scared. You can't emote with a kid. You can tell them like, Hey, do you want to, and actually my biggest thing is like, usually I'm holding some type of cosplay proper weapon. And I'm like, Hey, do you want to hold it? Right. That's, that's what I, do. That's I, a lot. I That yep. breaks that ice quite, quite fast. Yep. Um, you don't want people to just be scared of you. Right. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Helmets are cool. And I'm not saying that you should not wear one, but I just prefer not to. I, I'm the um, same way. Um, but getting back, I want to get back to that point on the Dragon Con and everybody being in their own little like groups. Um, <laughs> that cracks me up personally. I love that that happens, but holy crap, there's a whole like I love running around Dragon Con. Like, oh, the no, like there's time for all to break away and I'll wander and just like yeah, look yeah. at people and whatever. Yeah. And maybe I'll run into someone that I wasn't expecting to see, which is great. Cool. Like I love that, but yeah. Yeah, like is that bad that we it's just kind of like click together? Is that a bad thing? Bad. I, well, I know where to find. Them. I will say that literally, I can tell you like the hotel and the like place on the on the floor that so many different people and friends are right, and they don't and they do they stick right where they are. Like if I want to find you, yes, you're by the you're, you're on the Marriott like right. top floor of the Marriott by the elevator with the other prop builders and with some other prop builder area, right? And then like literally. Across the room, there's like, oh, the cosplayers that do this thing, and then so I mean, I, I love it. I love the 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 way that works for sure. I'm ignoring some of the costumes here, so and not costumes, some of the um, things here. Hoku's here, so yeah, so actually, actually, it's worth mentioning. Uh, I am here. Ah, I want to like, welcome Hoku props to the stream. So he is kind of um, Hoku and I have. For the last two years developed uh, the ultimate online cosplay championship you know we've obviously had a lot of help and volunteers and whatever but him and i kind of make all the decisions so if anyone has any questions about the contest hoku is here to answer any question about the contest um and i'm gonna have a bunch of rules and all those things on the website later tonight or tomorrow um for those people who are just joining us, can you tell us about the costume contest again that you just announced, what, like yesterday? Today? It was this morning. So oh, yeah. if anyone's not familiar, uh, last year in May, um, we put together 
what started as a joke uh, in international um, cosplay competition, and it was judged by uh, I was the I was the host in the master ceremonies. And our judges were Frostbite cosplay, Hoku. Pro Actually, I got the fucking mug right here. Here was our judges <laughs> last year. We had Evil Ted, Frostbite, Hoku, Jackie Kraft, the Egg Sisters, and myself as the host. And this year, if if you care to hear it. Sure, we've got, we've got a few more people this year. Um, you do you have you have some really good? Not, not that you didn't have good people before, but even better, like even more good people. Right. Oh, and last year we had uh, we had Core Geek Eric as mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and Harrison from Vulpin Props mm -hmm. as honorary judges. So this this year, our on camera judges are myself, Cutie Pie Sensei, Vulpin Props, Bill Duran from Punish Props, Frostbite Cosplay, Hoku Props, and Evil Ted. Um, and our honorary judges are Stella Chu, Spicy Thai, all the way from New Zealand, the Egg Sisters, Core Geek, Samui San, who won Best in Show last year in our contest. Mm -hmm. Which is, uh, was awesome. Yeah, Beverly Downen, uh, Papa yep. Bear Cosplay, who's phenomenal, Tiffany Gordon Cosplay, and Zach Fisher. Um, so and there's probably going to be, so, like, we're probably just going to throw more people in there. Um, Why not, right? Hey, by the way, that's a list of people to go follow on every social yeah, media. Like, like, literally, that's just, that's a list. Go follow Every them. single one of those people yeah. is, like, a either tutorial artist or an influencer or a, they run a podcast or a blog. Like, those are the I people that inspire really cool. people to start. Yeah, like, like Bill cool. and Ted are the two guys that got me to start making. I and now I'm fucking hosting a thing where I have to tell them what to do, and they're like judges on the committee of the thing that I'm hosting, which is hilarious, because mm -hmm. they don't have any idea that I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. But That's okay. I think I think Ted knows. Ted knows you have a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, how are I'm, you so nice and humble and yet so rugged, ruggedly handsome at the same I ruggedly handsome that's it because I it's because he's sitting out in the woods that's why look at I, the I have an answer. <laughs> oh yeah so <laughs> my background is an animated snowy background because uh, my family we couldn't all be together so i wanted to feel like i was in wisconsin because that's where i'm from so this is what i did for my family christmas hangout but and that's why he's so nice is because he's from wisconsin have you ever met anybody mean from Wisconsin, I have not. I have a lot of yeah. good friends from Wisconsin. They just—they don't exist. Um, they can't help it. They have to be nice, right? We're we're like as close as you can get to Canadians. We just don't say "I'm sorry" as much. Um, yeah, you do say "oop." Well, like, oh, oh, we we oh, do oh, say "oop." Oh, 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 oh. I, I do that all the time. And holy cow! And holy smokes! And oh, and you see the snow plow coming down? The, yeah, holy, yeah. Uh, but <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we've. Um, what the hell were we talking about? I, uh, the costume contest and how good of people, that, like, yeah, just the list, the list of people that you have involved. Um, one, you should definitely go follow it, like, just the whole yeah. list down. And then, two, yeah, like, I'm excited because when I said this earlier, but last time you had like three weeks or a couple, like, it was not very long to do everything. You and Hoku literally edited a bunch of stuff and made it all work while and it would work out. Um, I had so much fun watching, like, a couple part of, of it. I mean, you sent it a video, we like, yeah. We put in, we had fun sending that video. For Honestly, we have, don't know. We ended yeah. the whole show, it was a four hour <laughs> show, and it ended with Wolfgar and his shop guys dancing, and then we faded to the credit. So he was the last person on camera. You're welcome. Um, I hadn't, I hadn't made an appearance all four hours before that. Please do that again. In fact, if you like want to after several videos scene. of you guys dancing, we'll just put all of them in there because why just, not? Um, um, we'll just be the 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 intermission dance party right. prop holders. Yeah, that'll be all right. That, we yeah. don't say a single thing. I know, yeah, that. people laughed, cried, smiled. You know, it was yeah. it was a very it was a roller coaster of emotions. But um, so, so, uh, one other thing I wanted to point out for anyone that didn't see it last year is. It's a contest put on by the community for the community. We're not paid or owned or sponsored. Like we have sponsors for prizes, but we're not sure. like we just do this because we want to. In fact, last year every single person that was part of it lost money on making prizes and mailing sure. props to Brazil and France and all kinds of shit. And it was so worth it. And um yeah, Debbie, uh that dance, you can find it. It's on TNT's YouTube, uh, whatever. But 
Yes. It's anyway, so yeah, this year we're, we're going to try to raise some money to pay our talent. And, you know, so we don't all lose a shitload of money, which, and, and we're going to give a lot of merch and incentives for it. So I think, I think people will be excited to support the idea of a community run event. Um, but, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I'll have the website up, uh, in the next couple of days to answer a lot of questions and the rules and, I'll show a lot of stuff that happened last year and mm -hmm. uh, submission is going to be open from like April 1st to April 30th. And then the show is going to be on May 15th. Um, cool. Well, I'm, I'm so. excited to see it. Um, for sure. I'm excited to see it and I'm excited to be just like watching what you do with it. Right. And I really do hope that you guys do this, you know, the next 10, 10, 15 years, like, let's go. Let's just continue to have this online. Yeah, there's... I love it started as a joke. I, that's my. That's another really good part it, about it. It started as a joke, and we're going to oh, take yeah. it a little bit more seriously this time, but we don't want to take it too seriously. Because oh, no, when you do no. that, it no. ruins everything. Like, we want to have fun with it. And we are, by the way. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we yeah, never want to take this too seriously, but we do want to legitimize it and protect it. And, you know, we're going to get, like, its own business license eventually and like, <laughs> a dedicated website we did all social media and all that stuff but and that's you know whatever you people watching this don't care about that they just want to see a good show they want something to look forward to they want to see positivity great cosplays an outlet to share what they've made potentially and to see some of their favorite influencers just mm -hmm. talk about what cosplay Stuff. means to them and to yes. to hang out and that's a big deal and i would say this I did like that, even though it was four hours long, when I did listen to the four hours long one while I was working, I did like that you, you know, spent lots of time on each person, but then people were just talking, right? Like I got to know you and I got to know Ted and, and the egg sisters and yep. whoever else was on there um, more. Right. So that was, I really, really liked that aspect of it. It was definitely different than a normal costume contest where you're like, Oh look, these judges are probably, qualified and they probably do some cool stuff and that's it they just kind of wave yep. right they stand up and wave and that's yeah, it like uh, so, yeah hoku had a really good point last year where he said you know the audience the people that are watching they get to see on camera the same thing that all of us judges saw it's all mm -hmm. you know uh high quality pictures and video like you guys see the same yeah. thing that the, the judges see for deliberations and prejudging which is great so you guys are right on the level with us you don't have to be up close at a con, like sometimes you have to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times at cons, um, there's an MC that just talks the whole time, which is fine. That's the way it goes. Sure. You don't hear a lot from the judges until maybe the end of the show. And during this, we got live judge commentary from our whole panel throughout the entire show. And we were just yeah. talking around and joking with each other. And yeah, yeah. Hoku and Sammy were eating ice cream and I was eating brownies and Ted was talking about how sore his ass was from his shitty chair and stuff like that. Like that's great. That stuff that's the kind of stuff you do. It. Yes. Yeah. But that's the kind of stuff that does happen backstage, right? When you're judging costume contests and in the green room, like you were talking about before. So it is it does involve a lot more people there, right. where they're able to do that. Um which is part of the reason I like doing this kind of show too. We're just Normally we have questions, but you've answered a lot of the questions. I do want to cover maybe a couple of those questions, sort of. But I also have a couple of new questions I wanted to try. Ooh, about the contest or just something um, else? No, we're going to move past the contest for a okay. bit. But if anybody is, does have any questions about the contest, please, please yeah, message put them in chat, and either chat. Yeah. one of us or Hoku will answer. Um, yes. Yeah. And yeah, and even we'll, that stream this morning, and he was talking about it on his stream. So, you know, we, we got a lot of great exposure this morning more will be coming but I'm, I'm happy to you know you you could ask me fucking anything james and i will <laughs> right. answer honestly so, so here so i have a couple questions so first of all fav we usually cover favorite tool and it's one of my favorites so i gotta say it last time you had a special like uh box cutter oh that's and right and it was a special box cutter that you were like possibly going to Put the market, or somebody was going to put the market. Is that in a market yet, or can we? Yeah, so I, I'm working with a company yeah, called Famori Cutlery, who mm -hmm. specifically makes like you know scissors, shears, cutting tools for like quilters, fabric, fashion, things like that. And they're developing a line of um, 
uh, tungsten carbide blades, you know, like box cutter refills specifically for cutting EVA foam, mm -hmm. uh, rotary cutters and other shears that they were looking to co-brand with my logo and also with TNT's logo. Um, they're a really highly respected company. And it, I think I brought it up in the last interview because I was like still in this weird, like, shocked stunned phase where i was like how the fuck did this happen like did they even know yeah how, like, yeah immature and like perverted <laughs> and just that was because you just got some other thing that yeah you, but yes yeah, but yeah, then i think I, I don't know when it was but um i i was in a documentary for brother sewing machines yep. um which went really well and um just I, I, I got, I, I put out a video for just like complete airbrushing for beginners and some dude from Awada saw it and they gave me a full partnership and they're partnered with Createx airbrush paints now. So they gave me a partnership <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I'm not trying to brag. I'm just saying like, when you put yourself out there and you make content and you do a good job. I was about to say, I think that doing the good job is where right. you I mean, one, your voice is good for it. Two, your face isn't bad looking, apparently, compared from what everybody's been saying here. And then three, and this is the really important thing, you know what you're doing, and I guess in four, <laughs> you present it well, right? So you have, you always, like, you see, I should, I see the behind the scenes that you have, and in general, you, like, when you're watching your videos, you got plenty of space, it makes sense, it's edited well, um, you, you can tell that you, you put effort into it there. And you're probably just good at editing and as well as the things that you're doing, right? So there's a lot of people who definitely know what they're doing. They just can't edit well or don't edit well, or that's not like what they choose to put their time into, that sort of thing. Right. So like where I think if I was one of these bigger companies, I want somebody like you to represent me because it's you're going to put out good, good content. It's the same reason that other YouTubers and other people get – picked up all the time because they're literally already doing the work they have the experience right. and they have the and they're all self taught yeah. and they're motivated yeah, and self determined and all that. And you know, I'm self taught at ultimately everything, you know. Um <laughs> like like, like we all are. I'm I'm not, you know, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you are too, you know, and so is all the, the makers. No, 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 no. I went to school for life one time. Right. Yeah, there's no <laughs> cosplay university that, you know, <laughs> in in Phoenix that we all go to or something. Uh but Phoenix online. Yeah, uh, University of Phoenix cosplay, you know, whatever. I, no, I got actually, my, couple, my degree on the wall, and I'm I'm proud of that thing. Um, but there are a couple made not not made up degrees, but like made to like custom made degrees where people have actually majored in cosplay. I suppose to like costume design and other things. It's, it's a thing. People have done it. Uh, someone. No, I wouldn't normally bring this. Someone commented on one of my YouTube videos. Yeah, and yeah. I've done really well in the last. I've got like sixty thousand subs in the last year and a half on my YouTube. Just because wow. people like the content, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. I got this comment the other day that said, wow, this is just like an episode of how it's made, but with all the details left in it. Um, and I thought <laughs> it was so yeah. funny because yeah. Yeah. there's so many other shows or YouTube channels or tutorial artists that uh, they just, and I'm not trying to like bash other people, but they just, they talk about random nonsense or stories or like, oh, I was in, you know, fucking... Switzerland and I met this blah 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 and then before you know it, you're switching channels because you want to learn you don't want to hear a story yes. so I don't tell stories I just say hey I'm this person and you're going to learn this and let's get started and within 20 seconds you're learning shit and that's Which what people what need want. that's I mean have, and I actually last time I talked to you I asked you if you were going to get into TikTok I mean your name's I talk I said something people. along the lines of like Fuck no, or something like that. <laughs> no, actually, I think that you were not quite as um, upset about it as that. But also, I mean, you're doing so well on, on, on YouTube. But I do think that you do well on TikTok if you wanted to. Maybe I have. I, I made a TikTok just so no one would steal my username. And I have sure. like two time lapse videos of me like wiring some electronic prop that I made and something else. But mm -hmm. like, I. I I don't do anything that I do for the money, but right. if there's no incentive for me to do it, like sure. I don't get a big like boner from getting TikTok likes or anything, you know, like that doesn't do anything for me. Uh, right. 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 Well, know, it's also, it is a different platform. It's different. I mean, we just covered that we're a little bit older than most cosplayers. I would say at this point, maybe not They're like, so it is, 
not the same. But what I like about TikTok is exactly what you were just saying before, which is that in the one minute or less video, you're gonna if it's something that you're gonna teach me, I'm gonna learn that there. And I think I think that's where you do well at. It. People told that, me that, that I can do be well cool. It. It, I mean, the, I, the I, I can't do it. I've tried to do it. It's really that's tough. a level of difficulty for yeah. you know, especially cosplayers, because mm -hmm. you know, teaching someone how to do a, a two part cast mold in you know a one minute video that's <laughs> yeah. very difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is. But, um, yeah, I mean, I can be a goofy asshole, but I've, I've been a goofy asshole my whole life. I want to start building like, you know, I'm going to be 40 eventually. And when I'm 40, do I want to be known for like putting bananas in my pants and humping accordions? Like, no, <laughs> I want to be I mean, known for uh, making cool stuff and putting on cool stuff. Sure? I mean, I I, I've done plenty of that on my Twitch channel. In fact, that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. that's what Twitch is for, but everything else is for everything else, you know? Sure. And um, th there was a really good uh, question that Rob asked a moment ago. Um, okay. And it said, I've asked this to James, but talk, what yes, cosplay yes, yes. advice would you give to your younger self? And I, I guess I would have just said, like, start sooner. Because um, I, I started sewing when I was 30, and I'm 36 now. And I, I've, you know, I've come a long way, and I, I love my community and whatever. But, you know, I worked corporate jobs, and I was in, I love working in mental health because it's so rewarding. But, it's also very challenging. And then I got into IT stuff and whatever. And, you know, I did all these wild things. But I just, I fell in love with the people of cosplay. And I was lucky enough to get into the industry of, like, cosplay retail, working for TNT and doing marketing for them. And I had my own brand as a fashion designer. And I took commissions. So, like, I just took this, like, I think my mom said something like, do you want to put on a, a stupid looking shirt and khakis for the rest of your life and go to an office? Or do you want to like do what you want to do? And I was like, I want to do what I want to do. Definitely. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and actually you make a really good point though. Okay. For people watching, I'm doing what I want to do now. Yeah. But I worked, I worked 15 years in a normal job, right? Or maybe 13 years in a normal job. You just mentioned that you had a, you worked there too. In that entire time, we were, you know, building too. Now, while you said start sooner, which is your best your, your advice, I get you, but it isn't always. I think a lot of people are like, oh, well, if you just do what you want to do, like immediately, you're fine. And I had to build a lot, like a life, and the things that I did before this, right? And then got into it. And like, it, everybody's different, obviously, but I'm happy the way, with the way I did it. Yeah, like um, like Bill and Britt worked yeah. for Microsoft until yeah, they could afford definitely. to launch their full punish props thing as a full time thing. And exactly, I think Bill walked away first, and then Brittany stayed sure. there to make sure there was in you know like that kind of thing. And like they yep. were smart and calculated, but then and there are I a guess, lot of people too who have a significant other who you know is supporting them in that way too, right? That are that are actually cosplayers or like makers. Now that's not to say that they aren't going to eventually make it giantly big and be able to support them right but one thing that everybody just has to know that everybody's different okay yeah so every, everyone has different circumstances really, and yeah, you know yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what sure. i'm trying to say yeah but also uh, you know, putting bananas in your pants yeah that's, yeah uh, uh once i started this as a full-time you know gig uh another piece of advice i would give myself would early on would have been do not put all your eggs in one basket, you know? Yes. Because yes. if that, if that one basket falls apart, you are fucked. And that happened to me. Um, and I'd built a good community and, and the basket I'm talking about is, is Twitch creative back when, and some of you guys might know about this, but Twitch creative used to actually have a community. They don't really anymore. Yeah. They kind of pretend to, but we're not going to go into that, but, when that community was shattered because the funding was removed, um, it really left a lot of us that made a living from that community um, kind of like without any recourse of how to sustain a business model. And, <laughs> a, lot, and yeah. a lot of people like had to go back and get normal jobs, which is fine. Like you got to do what you got to do. Sure. Um, but I, I took some of Bill Duran's advice. He told me, you know, he said, do everything. You know, like I met the first time I met him, he said, talk, I know who you are. I've seen your Twitch streams. I've seen your work. 
and I was like pissing myself by the way. Cause I was, cause Bill Duran said, Hey, talk, come over here. I got to talk to you. And I was like, hold on, let me piss myself. And then I'll, come <laughs> um, and now we're friends. Yeah. Great. But, um, sure. but he said like, you got to do more. You have to make videos, write books, do, you know, keep streaming, take commissions, eventually stop taking commissions and do more. And, you know, the things that work, do those. And the things that don't work, cut them out of your routine and be smart, be aware, you know, just make adjustments as needed every week or every month as you need to. And in the last two years, I've done that and I've generated the most amount of success in the last two years. Like shit that I didn't think I'd accomplish for 10 years happened in the last six months. And yep. it's, there, there are times when it's terrifying and I'll, I'll share, sorry to just keep. No, you're fine. Go for it. Keep a talking. windy asshole right now. But <laughs> um, I, I, I've said this to a few other people. I am so much more terrified of success than I am a failure. Failing is so easy. Yeah. You, you know, like I've, I've fucked up most of my life. The first 30 some years. It's so easy. Like if you, if you try something and you fail, like big deal, no one hears about it. You know, you pick yourself up and you know, as long as you survive your failure, you're going to be fine. You learn a lot from it too. And you learn every single time you yeah. fail. Um, as long as you're like, you know, sober enough to remember whatever the hell you did. <laughs> sure. Right. But, yeah, yeah. Um, but when you succeed, sometimes you don't learn from your successes. And when you succeed at something, you're accountable to continuing to uphold that success. And it invites opportunities that you weren't expecting. And that invites more opportunities. And as you perform and do well, then people want more of you and they demand more of you. And mm -hmm. then you become, you put yourself in a position where you sacrifice a bit of who you are as a person to give yourself to a community or to the world of people who are interested in your content, whether it's a broadcaster, a podcast host, a tutorial artist, a competitive cosplayer, a judge, a court, you know, like succeeding is hard and maintaining success is even harder. So sometimes I do certain things like expecting to, or hoping to fail a great example is last year's online ultimate online cosplay yeah. championship. Yep. I had, I didn't give a shit. And I, I was too dumb to be afraid to care if it failed and it succeeded. And for the last eight months, I've had people send me messages every week saying, when's the next one, you know? <laughs> there, so yeah, there now been, you have to perform, yeah, right? There've been a lot of contests this year and like a lot of people liked ours a lot. Um, I'm not going to say it was the best or anything because it, it wasn't, but it was one of the best. We'll say, but it, it was, was it one was of the best, in it was exceptional, and we had a great team of people, and it was fun, and it was interactive, and and all that. Um, so because it succeeded, we were tasked with organizing another one, and sure. yeah. now we have a committee of I think 14 to 16 people, and that's going to get harder because you have it's not just you. It's not you just being like, fuck it, whatever. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's, I've been there. Um, yeah. And like, it, it, might, there. it might flop. And if it does, like, you know. Whatever. I don't think it'll flop. I don't think it'll flop. I think it'll just be a lot more work for you. And it will be, you're going to be worried a lot about like making everybody happy and all that jazz. Yeah. And like, at least I'm talking from past experience now. So like what I'm talking about is I, I run something called Project Cause Awesome, which is a weekend where we all get cosplayers and photo shoot and I'm, I'm sorry, cosplayers and photographers together for photo shoots. And then we hang out. Right. So we do like, it's in the Midwest and we just hang out and chill, which is a great time. It's fantastic. The first couple times it was really like, whatever, we're just going to like rent this hotel and people were just going to meet here and it'll be fine. And then once it grew, we, st I started having a committee for it and a bunch of other people for it. And it just, it becomes a lot of work. There's a lot of people who are like, well, can we do panels? Can we do these? Other? And like I, the whole, keep it simple is definitely important to do. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I totally understand that you want to make this an amazing costume contest, but uh, doing a lot of what you did last time and like, just not being afraid to fail and just going forward and being like, Hey guys, submit it here. And it'll be awesome. And having that same attitude 
and not just getting like super professional about it. Like you said before, you're keeping it fun. Um, you know, complain about your ass hurting on, on camera for like 10 minutes. That's fine. Yep. Right. That's what makes it again. That's what makes it human. But it also is like, it's a lot less pressure. Right. And don't, and when you also have when you're sponsored by th people and you know, all of a sudden you have a boss of some level, then that also makes it worse too. So, or makes it harder. And, and, um, you know, it's just nice to have the money, but you can't, you're not the all like, you know, it's, it's funny. Thing. And, I mean, this is a side thing. Like, I'm fortunate yeah. that my boss found me through my Twitch channel, and I talk yeah, yeah, about yeah, yeah. some yeah. of the most wild, inappropriate, just yeah. sometimes downright disgusting things on stream, and she fucking loved it. Sure. And she hired me to be her marketing coordinator because she loved my personality, and, like, you know, I was, I'm was i always positive, and it was fun, but, yeah, there's some things where she was like, you know, I could have done without hearing that. Um, but positivity always kind of shines through whatever content you're creating, whether it's live pre-recorded at a con, at a panel, at a workshop, whatever. So, um, you know, when we're putting on a contest and we put just a freaking great panel of positive makers together that people respect that are positive people, like you can't go wrong. You know, like I trust all of these people, like, you know, and last, I, I, I could go the whole time without swearing, you know, I'd, I'd, sure. It was hard to not smoke on camera, but, you know, I had to lock it up a little bit and I got, I got through it, but. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those are little sacrifices, honestly. Um, <laughs> not, it's not smoking. You can always take a smoke break or put it right. on your talk is making coffee sign, right? Um, oh, I can't do it because it's not going to work because we're on. Oh, we're on the other one. I love that you have a flash screen that just pops up. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's cut off though because we got we got yeah. zoom zoom cameras um, zoomed. Uh, but yeah, what I guess what I'm getting at is when when everybody who's taking part in it, when there's a lot of people, right? It, they're all going to have a different vision for it. So it's, I guess, my only piece of advice is like keep it keep it as yours, or somebody like have one have a, a, a top person that's going to be like, nope. We are not going to do that. Or yes, we, we, we do have some of that. And that's good. You need that. Yeah, like that's kind of me and Hoku's job to do that. And mm -hmm. um, you know, but but also every single judge, uh, honorary judge, uh, mm -hmm. even our just like staff, like we have support staff and volunteers. Sure. And yeah, 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 yeah. We all. I told everyone, like you all have equal hundred percent like power or equal power as 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 Hoku and I do. Because your opinion is just as valid, and we're you know, like this this is a community thing, you know. This isn't like some weird dictatorship right. thing, and like you know, like C two E two cosplay contest, for example. Like we knew who the judges were, we knew who the MC was, we knew who the finalists were, which is great. We love the show, but none of us are. I, I I'll say I'll speak myself. I have sure. no idea who runs C two E two, who picked the person in charge of running the cosplay contest or the person who was in charge of picking the judge. It like, I don't know who those people are. Mm -hmm. And there, there was some drama about that last year as I'm sure every contest is yeah, no, no, no hard feelings or anything, but this is a very transparent uh, thing where mm -hmm. people can talk directly to any of us. And we have a discord server that's going to be public where, all the judges and committee members are going to be on the same discord server with people that are competing Yep, and they can ask us questions and it's going to be a fun place where people can share work in progress and what they're doing and meet each other from all over the world. And, yeah, and I like that too. One, because of what all the things you're saying, but two, it's different, right? So it's giving somebody a different, a different way of interacting with the judges and seeing, just like you said before, you're seeing what we're seeing or we're seeing what you're seeing. Right? Yeah. So when I judge costume contests, a lot of times people will be like, well, that didn't seem like, you know, the correct way winner is like, did you see that like the leather work that they did on their belt? A lot of times they work? can't see right? it. They can't, sitting, they can't. You know, 60 feet away from the stage, you know, and this, right. this time people will be able to see. Right. And also lighting and stuff like that. I, I, there was one video I saw that was when I was watching the costume contest and it just like, I knew the person and I'm not going to say who it was by any means, but like, they were just super backlit. And I'm like, that costume looks so much. I've seen the costume in person. It looks so much better not oh. backlit. And I'm like, ooh, 
I just, it, it, but yeah. that's what matters. That that's going to no, matter. And presentation right? was twenty five percent of people's matter. points, and mm-hmm. and you know oh, we we went matter. through it just like any other typical con where we had every judge to- total up points. And for, forgive me, by the way, if if there's a lot of people watching that are not competitive cosplayers or <laughs> you don't give like really care about competitive cosplay, this is just the dynamics of how that works. And a lot of times, like. Like I was a judge for TwitchCon's cosplay contest last year, and there was a hundred and twenty-five thousand people watching that event. You know, uh, and a lot of times at conventions, the cosplay contest is by far, by thousands of people, the most attended event at every oh, convention, for sure. in person or virtual. So people do give a shit because um, they want to see it's costumes fun. that just blow them away, mm-hmm. and. I've had the privilege of competing a couple of times and I've had the bigger privilege of stepping out of that and doing other cool things too. But it's nice to be, to know what it's like. Oh yeah. Yeah. And to know what it's like to be a handler and a host and a judge and Mm -hmm. And all that stuff. Pressure just to, to put this out there too. anybody who's doing any costume contest judges as well as the competing people, and the handlers, that, there's a lot of pressure there. You might right. not be feeling 100% that day, right? Maybe you have a cough, maybe you have whatever, and that's that's also a problem. Yeah. So as much as, I don't know, I try I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt when they're up there on stage because you can you can be really well-spoken all the time except for that one time, right? What and, or judge, whatever, or... Right? or like a judge or, yeah. or a costume competitor, anybody, right? So a lot of times... I feel like there is that one, you know, half an hour or hour that the costume contest rolls that people all eyes, like you were saying, all eyes are on them. And that's part of it. And I get that that's part of it. But I guess a big thing is um, in the past, I have seen people like, like, I can't believe that person said that one thing. And I used to be that guy sometimes who would say, like, I can't believe that guy said that one thing. And then I tried it. <laughs> right. And then I was like, it's just like cosplay. You don't knock it till you try it. And I'm like, ooh. It's a lot harder than it looks. And also, like, yep. you know, there are things that you don't see that they see in, in that random right thing. So, yeah, just a, just a little side note on competitive cosplay. Well, um, something we talked about last year was yeah. uh, like, typically at any in person con, there's a round of pre judging where the judges have about four minutes to look at every finalist, take whatever notes they can. Yeah. Then they have mm-hmm. about an hour and a half or two of deliberations to figure out who's going to win. Best in show, second, third place, and any other judges. To, like, we had the privilege of having like four days to deliberate and talk mm-hmm. about it and have meetings. And we it's really, we it's really simple. cared. Yeah. yeah. And we slept on it. We woke up and we looked at it again and we did all kinds of stuff because we want mm-hmm. to know who had the best costume in the world that submitted and who deserved the other prizes and the judges' choice yeah. stuff. So it's, it's just really unique. And, um, yeah, forgive me again. I, I I didn't intend to talk about it too much, but I, no, I, cool. I have to I mean, say, I, I guess on a personal level, announcing this event this morning, not just for me, but for you know Hoku and Chat and all the other judges, honorary judges, you know, volunteers, everything yeah, yeah. has brought like this absolute surge of like, yes, we get to do something. We get to start planning yeah. it. We get to start talking to people. We get to start building people that want to compete. I got texts from people in Australia and the UK and Europe saying like, thank goodness you guys are doing this again. Like I haven't made shit since, you know, for a year. Yeah. And now I get to, we need deadlines. We need goals right. in general. And this is a lot of people like to do for the, for the competitiveness of it. And also it isn't crazy competitive. Like you said before. No, it's a, yeah, it was a party. It was a celebration. A fun thing. And right? I mean, don't get me wrong. Price. There's yeah. great costumes, amazing costumes. Yeah. Price, the best in the world because, again, they can come from all over the world, right? But again, but like it's not a you have to be this level in order to submit or whatever, right? Like you're and you're gonna, yeah. No, it's it's just a good time. Well, this Definitely year, watch it, master class only. I know I mentioned oh, yeah, earlier, well, yeah, but um, yeah, yeah, the, the costumes and in intermediate were just too damn good last year. So we were just like, well, fuck that. We're going all the way because. So that's a good question. So if somebody, if, so in order to be a master class, does that mean that you have to have won something? Nope, uh, not this year. So last okay. year, that's how we had it set up. But this year, we're just going to say like anyone can enter. Mm-hmm. If, if you know, 
Yeah. If, if you're selected as one of our, I think we're going to stick with 50 finalists. If you're selected as yeah. one of the top 50 that submit, then you're going to be on camera and you're going to be a finalist, whether you it's your first costume or you've won 30 best in show awards. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Um, so that's, honestly, that's how it should be. And I mean, cause all the costumes are different. Yeah. And like one time I walk into a costume contest and somebody will be just like, they'll have this amazing blow everybody away costume. And I'll talk to them and they're like, Oh, it's my first costume. Right. I'm like, wait, what? And they spent a lot of time and they did the research and like, that's yep. what they put obviously their heart and soul into. And, and then of course, and there's the, the people who really know what they're doing. They do it all the time. So yeah, I mean, it, each costume is different. So why not judge them the right. same? But like you know, C two E two is a master class only thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Master class only thing. BlizzCon is a master class only thing. And well, you have to. You know, last year was kind of a, a a test phase, or I don't know whatever you want to call it. It was just yeah, like yeah. Hey, let's do it and see what happens. And we didn't expect to get the reaction and the numbers and the people that we did. And you know, I, I give credit to all the judges for participating because they drew a huge, you know, amount of enthusiasm for people that mm -hmm. the, the thing about, about powerful judges is they're the people that draw the biggest makers that want to impress those judges and show the world what they can do, you know? Mm -hmm. And like, I, I was part of the committee for TwitchCon's cosplay contest. And that's why they brought in Kamui because they wanted the cosplayers to feel valued that, you know, one of the biggest influencers in the world was going to look at their costumes and judge right. them. Everything. And, and there's a ton of value in that because she earned it, you know, or like mm -hmm. Yaya Han or Bill Duran or, you know, Vulpin or like any, and like any, like any of these people. Yeah. There's, and it's funny because all like, the big things. Yeah. And I, I feel so privileged and lucky because you know, statistically, and I, I don't give a shit about this. Like I'm one of the, I, I'm not as well known as any of the other judges on our committee period. But a bunch of the judges told me if you're not hosting this year's event, I don't want to be part of it. There you go. That's such a huge compliment to me. I, I, I praise for sure. And I think a lot of it probably is what we were saying before, which is you're keeping it light and you're keeping it real. And you're keeping it to the point where they're not going to care if, if they have to say something on camera, they're just going to say it. Right. Right. And people it's in, they liked that. Obviously that's what I liked about the costume contest last year too. And also it's that, that um, inside, I guess you get inside the judge's heads. Obviously you have four days to, to talk about it before you're on, on camera. Well, this year we'll have like three weeks. Yeah. 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 For that, Cause last year was a fucking nightmare. Dude, that was, Dude, we had we no idea what we were doing. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, like I said, it's fine. But let's let's move on to this. Um, there was a question. And okay. I'm gonna find it's a lot of comments back here. We'll go with this, and we're we're also like 18 minutes over. I don't know how much. Oh, uh, the, the person I was planning on chatting with ended up yeah, having other plans, so I'm not okay. in a crunch. So whenever you decide the show is over, is when it's over. Uh, well, otherwise. we got some time, man. Let me go back and find this for a second. I want to see it was raw. I did want it was a good question. Uh, yeah. No, oh, do you think there can be a balance between cosplay and corporate? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. at least in my there mind, there, there does have to be. Go on. You, you go first. Well, it's okay. That's, that's an interesting. Okay. So as the marketing quarter coordinator for TNT cosplay supply, um, you know, we're not, we're not corporate, you know, TNT cosplay, we have five employees, um, of which I'm one of, um, there's, you know, the owner, her mother, two of our order fulfillment people and uh, a shipping coordinator. So six people, I should say. Um, sure. and a, a lot of people think we're, you know, some big corporate, whatever, but we're not, we're a small company that makes, you know, we, we have a great product and we were the first in North America to start a cosplay company. And, um, we've continued to have a great reputation of, a great product and being a group of highly professional people. Um, and so anyway, the word corporate kind of changes things a little bit. Cause when you say corporate, then you're inviting, you know, names like Joanne fabrics and Hobby well, Lobby. Yeah, and hold on, hold on. I think the actual question was when we were talking about, 
going full time cosplay and like can you can you can you work in a corporate place and then also cosplay? Oh, like can you have a full time job as a? But I like you where know, you were going with that, so I don't really want to cut you off too much because I do. I mean, what you were saying before with the whole you know the corporate in that respect, but the actual question I think was more when we were talking about playing uh, like in both fields, right? Like, yeah, oh, I'm doing costume and I'm also, I'm also in corporate, but I, I mean, we can, I just wanted to stop you there for a second. Okay. Um, no, I'm, I'm glad you did. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, when I started cosplaying and teaching myself how to sew and make props, you know, I, I had a full-time job as an IT director for a series of outpatient mental health clinics in Milwaukee and it had to be a hobby until right. I started making costumes and it was fun to go to cons, but then I, between cons, I didn't know what the fuck to do. So I, I started making men's clothing and I started making crazy pants and jackets and vests and all kinds of wild clothes. And every time I'd leave the house, people were like, where the hell did you buy that? Those are so cool or whatever. And then I started taking commissions and I was like, fuck, now I got basically two jobs mm -hmm. and I was in a position where I saved up a bunch of money and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to try to start a clothing company. And I got into some art shows and craft fairs and I started streaming and taking it. So it was, it was a huge risk and it was yeah. probably really stupid. But <laughs> I don't know if it was stupid, right? Like at the time it was fucking stupid, but all right, all right. it worked out because I worked 85 hours a week for the first yes. three, four years. And that's what you have to like. If you start a company, whether you're, manufacturing toilets from scratch or you're making clothes or props or whatever, like you got to work three times as hard. Um, yeah. and you got, you got to legitimize your brand. You got to get a logo. You got to get a business license. You got to get a bank account. Like it's so much more than that too. It, like that's, that's yeah. the basic. I help people start businesses all the time. Just like not start businesses completely, but I, I give them advice on it. And what people aren't expecting is the amount of hours that you really do need to put in to just the smallest thing. So it's so easy to um, to come up with concepts and ideas. Yeah. But it's so much harder to actually implement them. Either it's you doing it, which at the beginning you, you have to, or you have to pay somebody to do it. If you're paying somebody to do it, you want to pay, pay to do it right, so you're going to be paying professional, normally at professional prices or like at very minimum professional friend discount prices. Um, and it's, it's rough. It right. is... Uh, there's a lot of hidden costs. Oh, yeah. I had a ton there's of friends that were like, why are you charging me yeah. for this? And I'm like, because it cost me 60 bucks worth of materials and five hours of my time. And you want me yeah, like, yeah. Was it, you want this like, for free? Like, like, what you know. are you doing for me where you're spending a bunch of your money and doing a bunch of labor for me for free? You know? Um, right. And the thing is, if you want to give them stuff, like I'll give people things, but it's only because I want to give them. Like, I'm like, hey, you know what? Right. You or you made something for them specifically. Or, yeah, I, yeah. I, here's a Christmas present. Right, like if it's a present, that's if it's a gift, it's different. Right. Um, but let's let's go back to this. Like, so I do. I think it's very possible. Um, very possible. And I think a lot of people, most people, they are into doing cosplay or you know anything else professionally. They a lot of people do start off in corporate or running a corporate job, and then, uh, like Talk said, you work two two jobs for a couple years or whatever. Oh yeah. And build up some stuff and make sure that it works. And yep. then you can take that leap. And even yeah, you, you have I to, run, I run a makerspace, right? Yep. I have another job. So it's not, this isn't my full-time job. I own, it is a full-time job, but I have two full-time jobs. Correct. Right. Yep. And that's the way I do it. And I've talked to lots of people about this. Um, it's, it is, it is difficult to do. It's definitely not impossible, but it does depend on your situation. Right. I, so I, some people will have insurance through something else or right. that sort of thing. Those are important. Yeah, I mean, like, if, if you got money in the bank or a family that supports you or you hit the lottery, like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. As long as you, like, put work into it and make it successful. Otherwise, you're just going to be, you know, bleeding someone's bank account. But um, uh, something I called Bill Duran around this time last year. And I said, it was right when I was starting to get sponsorships from companies and I was doing videos and streaming and... Mm -hmm. workshops and cons and that was when cons were still happening or whatever and i was like dude i need i need to bend your ear for a second because like i'm dealing with things that i 
never thought I'd deal with. Like, how yeah. do I manage this stuff? And I, and I asked him a question. I said, I said, Bill, like, I said, there's a, a, a very short list of people that are known as like the upper echelon top tier makers. And it's like, you know, it's Punish Props, Evil Ted, Kamui Cosplay, SKS Props, uh, Yaya Han. Like, that was all I could think of. You know? much more, but yeah, those like, are the that was it. And of course, there's like, you know, there's Volpen and Henchman mm -hmm. and other amazing, talented artists. But there's people that are like known as being the folks that inspired them to start. And I said, why is there only five fucking people on that list? And he, just, <laughs> he laughed at me because he knew exactly what I was talking about. And he gave me two answers. He said, the first thing is every person you just named on that list works their ass off every day unless they're sick or they're on vacation or like jury duty or something yeah, like, like that. What is, also, what's vacation, really? Right. And, and a lot of people don't take vacations. Yeah, and, like, we love it. And the, and the other thing he said was, so, so the first part, I was like, okay, I can work my ass off. I, you know, I, I've done that before. And he said, the second thing is, who the hell else out there has the time availability and resources to design a prop, make it, film it, document it, finish it, market it, build a community around it, publicize it, and share it with a community one prop at a time, one week at a time, every week for nine years straight. Who else is going to do that? There, yeah. said, That's why Punish Props is what they are. That's mm -hmm. why Evil Ted is who they are. That's why Kamui Cosplay is who they are. And it was at that moment I decided I no longer have a limit to my goals. I no longer have a ceiling or like a, once I get to this level, I'm happy. Like, I'm just going to be happy now and I'm just going to fucking shoot for the stars. That's mm -hmm. my ph philosophy now. And it's thanks to, to Bill taking the time to have that conversation with me. And ever since then, I've, like I said earlier, I, I just did what I thought was right for my brand, for the community, for people. I, I respond to every comment on my YouTube channel. I got to fucking, this like freaked me out. So I, like, at the end of the year on my YouTube channel, they send you a bunch of stats like, oh, here's all your statistics for the oh, year. Yeah. And it said, I responded to 8,370 some comments last year. And I sat there and I was like, that's insane. Like that's something a crazy person would do, but that's what I did yep. because I wanted my community to feel like they had a connection to me. Definitely. And also it's, I mean, it's going to build community. It's going to build reach. It's going to, people are going to respond to responses. Right. Yeah. Um, and then there's, there's so much more to it. There's, you got to collaborate with other artists, you oh, got to yeah. do cons, you oh, got to do yeah. workshops. You have to like, there's no limit to the amount that you can do. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, that's, that's the response I got. And it really helped me out because I was like, all right, here I go. Like, let's do it all. And I started getting really firm with my sponsors who wanted me to do things I wasn't comfortable with. In fact, I yelled at the vice president of a very large billion dollar company and they respected what I said so much. They filmed a documentary about me, <laughs> about it or for See, it. That's what happens. Honestly, a lot of people that are that high. But I set that, my boundaries like, and I was like, no. people that have balls, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. that's good. I couldn't believe it. I was like, <laughs> I thought they were going to cut me loose and be like, dude, fuck you, man. Like, yeah. you know, I didn't, whatever. But that depends on if you were right or not, right? Like, if you're right, then oh, you get I, the Not only was I wrong. No, I don't want to say I was right, but I, right. I, I'll tell you right now. You're I right. identified a problem and I proposed a solution. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's is kinda... what I did. You know, I was mm -hmm. professional. I wasn't a dick, sure. um, but, but I was firm and I said, you know, I said what I felt was true in my heart and I backed it up with a, you know, resolve and, and, and a mm -hmm. solution. And they made some adjustments, changed some things and offered me a really wonderful deal. And I I'm thrilled. Um, there, there was another question that someone asked that I wanted oh, to respond to. Oh, which yeah, was, uh, uh, what is something the cosplay culture needs to change that Abraham asked? Abraham, if you're still there, um, I really yeah. want to answer this. And, and can. James, if I, I don't know how you feel about this or if you notice it going on or not, but and I'm not going to elaborate too much on this, but I'm going to say something very 
specific. If you know what I'm talking about, take it. If you don't okay. know, leave it. Okay. I'm probably it's probably going to go right over my head. I've not been paying attention. No, I, I, I think I think you might know, but okay. The question is, um, what is something in the cosplay community that needs to change, right? And I think what needs to change most is people need to stop brand shaming other people for the materials they use to create whatever it is they're making. I see a lot of it happen on all platforms of social media. Uh, even when people, like I work for TNT and when people tell other people TNT is the best or only use TNT or if you don't use TNT, you're blah, blah, blah. Like yeah, that yeah. bothers me. Like, because it's kind of the same thing. Like when people brand shame other people, like, oh, like, I have an Xbox and you have a PlayStation, so you're oh, Nike shoes, you're or something. It's like or something. we're yeah. all fucking gamers. Like, who gives a shit what pla like who cares, right? I feel the mm -hmm. same way about like whether you use an Apple or an Android or you know, like whatever kind of EVA foam you use or clay foam or whatever. Like, we're all artists and we're all cosplayers. And when we or when we brand shame or engage in brand shaming it is extremely dangerous and very toxic for the entire cosplay community. It's huh. the only thing I see as a trend right now that's creating a rift between artists and it's not fair and it's not that's, right. So shaming in general. Absolutely. Um, it's it's definitely a big problem. In, of yeah. Bullying so, really. Yeah, I mean, it's um, bullying. So it's the shaming, the brand shaming. Um, like you see a lot of like body shaming and things like oh, that. Yeah, for sure. And constantly, so like, yeah, no, I, I would say that the whole bullying we used to call it bullying, now we call it shaming. Well, same kind of thing. The, the but, reason I was very specific about brand shaming is that you know, yeah, 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 people have been aware of you know, body shaming, body positivity, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether that, yeah, you know, you change the color of your skin to cosplay as a certain character, like that's been like we've addressed that for a number of years, and I think people have been very progressive and. And, and helpful, you know. At first, it was, sure, it was sure. toxic, and it was hard to see and hear some well, of the you have, to, you have to talk about it in order for people to understand how right. to actually like combat it, slash, not to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Right? You have to anyway. But, but yeah, like honestly, if someone is new and they make something that looks good or bad, like I'm gonna fucking congratulate that person or say like. Sure. I'm so excited that you made something new and it's your first prop, whatever they used. Or if they're a, an old school pro and they switch brands, like I don't give a fuck what people use. And like, I love TNT. I wouldn't work yeah. with TNT if I didn't love our products. Period. Sure, sure. Same way I'm, I'm partnered by brother and I have like fucking 11 of their machines. Yeah. because I love their products. Right. But I was willing to walk away from that sponsorship and still use their products. Cause I love them. Yeah. 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 Um, so it's just like that. Anyway, that's my answer to that question is okay. that's what I would like to see change is see people just be more supportive regardless of what they choose to use. And of oh, course sure. I, I support, you know, like I said, I worked in mental health for almost 10 years. Like I, yeah. I've been, I've been watching like dealing with, you know, women's abuse and, you know, trauma wards, detoxes, body shaming, all kinds like addiction, depression, anxiety, social anxiety, you know, all that stuff for most of my adult life. And the cosplay community, by the way, if you guys didn't know it is like one of the healthiest communities on the planet. It's good to hear. That's really and good. you might think there's a lot of drama in the cosplay <laughs> community. And, th and th there is sometimes, but compared to like, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. We're, no, we're doing pretty damn well is all I'm trying to say. We're, and we're nothing's happy. perfect. You know, honestly, let me talk about that just for a second. And I, I do want to talk about what you were talking about earlier though, but with, with cosplay and being involved in the community that has opened me up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I grew up in like rural Ohio, right? Where, I didn't have a lot of diversity or a lot of other things like that. So I just sure. didn't, I was, I was, I thought that I was, um, I guess open to diversity. And then I went to college and I got more and then I went to cosplay land. And that's when I started like, like really getting comfortable with all different kinds of people. Right. Right. And I just was uncomfortable because I hadn't had that, that interaction and that experience. 
in a shared like common love of things, right? Um, and also like conventions just bring out that community, right? There's there's music playing, people are dancing, people are having fun. Yep. It's not it's not like it's a un it's not like it's a, like a work event, right? Where you're there because you don't want to be there. Right. So conventions, so for the most part, everybody's there to have fun, and there's all kinds of different types of people there, and you get, you get to learn with them. You get to, like, actually learn who they are and how they are, and that has helped me. I, that, I, it's been a long time. I've been in it for a while, but when I was younger, I, I mean, my parents did a good job of raising me, and like to the point of you don't judge people by, you know, random things, but – Mm-mm. Still, still, like I understand why when people aren't exposed to that kind of, at that level, they can't quite get it where I can, right? And right. I can only get it because of the cosplay. So I really want to attribute that. To you. you got some uh, coffee over there? No, my turtles just knocked the oh, filter turtles. over, and it's making a bunch of noise. So sorry if you can hear that. No, we're we're okay. Um, Turn it yeah, off. So getting back to the brand shaming, real quick. Um, that's that is kind of news to me. Um, don't get me wrong; I'm sure that I've seen it some. Sometimes people will call that marketing, but I, it's it's not right. It's, you gotta you not you don't judge people. It's like getting back to what I was saying before. Um, with new people coming in, it's new people doing like not. It doesn't have to be somebody that's actually new. It's just somebody using a new product. <laughs> And if you're addicted to them or you're brand shaming or whatever it is, then you're teaching them to continue to be a dick. And that's, that's what you don't want to do. Right. right? And that's, that's rule number one. Just don't be a dick. Like honest, that's, uh, life would be so much better. And that's, what's great about cosplay because a lot of people in, in the cosplay community and also in like the maker community as well that I'm in and the film, a lot of like film prop people that I deal with are all really supportive. Right. Oh, and yeah. even though they're making a movie, they're doing it because they like to make movies. Right? Yep. That's the point of it. Yeah, and so, it's hard work and you know, it it's low okay. budget and they, you know, gotta pay the oh. bills, but they chose that line of work because that's what they want to do with their lives. And people people who are making movies, a lot of people who make movies, they're literally spending so much effort and time and literally getting p- paid very, very low wages right. unless they're in, in the union. In that case, then they have to go other places. But there's just a lot of love that goes into these things, right? A lot of love, and you can see it come out right there. So that's my roundabout way of answering that too. Okay. Um, cool. There's a lot. There's there's not a lot that, that I want to change. Um, let's see. I'm looking for other questions. Some more echo cosplay. I am looking for some other. There's one about tools. I think it was Abraham also said that too. I See, love that's, talking that's, tools. That's yeah. The I, I saw that one and uh, what's well, a tool you absolutely cannot live without? That is favorite tool style. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to get back to that because like I know every every week I have one that changes, right? Like literally, I can be like, oh man, the tool that I have this week is amazing. I'm gonna brag about one real quick. Hold on. Okay. There it is. All right. This. Is just a screwdriver. It's it appears like an ordinary screwdriver, and I didn't grab the it's thing. Just the handle of a screwdriver. It's the right. handle of a screwdriver is what it is. Right. So it appears like an ordinary screwdriver. I got some off of Amazon for this exact thing. So it, it works like a screwdriver, acts like a screwdriver. It's just a little screwdriver. The best part about it is that a 3D printer tip, normal like the normal ones for for. Uh, our Creality Pros, uh, Ender, Ender 3 Pros, it fits in there, right? So literally right in there. So the coolest thing about this is while that's super hot, like 240 degrees, I can heat it up and then I can put this up under the printer and literally unscrew or screw in just a tip without having to touch it. That's um, pretty cool. I You're just basically fix threading a... All the time. Yeah. All the time. I, I mean, smart. I, and don't get me wrong, it is it was one that was like meant for it's like ten bucks on Amazon or something. You can do it with others. I found a dollar fifty tool that I use in my other shop. Right. It does the same thing. But all it is is it's just like a little hex, you know, same way. But it's crazy how something this little can change your life. Because I have to do 3D printer maintenance every day. Like mm-hmm. literally every day, I think. So I use that thing all the time. Okay, cool. Um mine how about would you? depend on like because I, you know, I started in fabric and fashion, so like 
if I'm working with fabric, I got to have a really smooth rotary cutter. Mm-hmm. If I'm working with foam, I've got to have either like one of these tungsten carbide utility blades. Like that's my thing. Um, or barge thinner to mix with my barge because it goes on so much smoother than just straight clumpy barge. Um, if I'm working with leather, I have to have a good swivel knife. You know, if I'm working mm-hmm. with, there's so many different yeah, things. Well, like, I mean, yeah. So I guess if I, if I had to pick alone, one yeah. thing, it, it would probably be my rotary cutter. Cause I use it with foam, with fabric, with leather. Like I use it probably more than anything in a, in a good self healing cutting mat. Um, yeah, but yeah, I just, and then if I wanted to get really deep with it, I'd have to say some kind of like, you know, personal sanity. Like I have to be, <laughs> that's like, your favorite tool. I have to be mentally sound. Yeah. I have to have a very sharp focused mind. That's, that's my most valuable tool is so that's a, a follow up question. Then when you're, when your mind isn't sharp or focused, what do you do to sharpen it? So you can actually work because Lord knows you need to work. Everybody's like, right. oh, I got to make the videos. You got to do the things. What are your, what are your sharpening tools for your mental health? Hoku, my favorite tool is Hoku props, which is funny because <laughs> I rely on Hoku props to help me with so many things. So without him, yeah. But, um, same, same with friends. Like, we yeah, always, no, like you make that same uh, joke. Actually, is that kind of, okay. So you said when my mind isn't sharp, what do I do is I talk to good people. That's one of the first things I do. It's kind of like one of those, like, what do you do to pull yourself out of depression? If you're prone to depression and it's like, yeah, yeah. Eat something, do something active for even a short amount of time, even if it's like folding laundry, you know, like, oh, yeah, you, yeah, have yeah, to be, yeah. like you don't have to fucking work out or whatever, but like eat something, make sure you get good rest, take a fucking shower, clean your living space, um, talk to someone clean, that you clean care about. Clean your, clean your work area. That's a big one. Well, Makes my work area is in my house. Okay. Like a lot of people. So yeah, like my living room is my workshop and my, you know, whatever. <laughs> I, I'm yeah, single yeah. and I live alone and I have a house. Um, so whatever that I'm able to do that, but, but yeah, clean something, um, mm-hmm. that, that helps. Um, and then, yeah, usually when I have a clean workshop, I want to get in there and make something. Um, just like when you have a clean kitchen, maybe you want to cook something. Um, yeah, for sure. For but sure. If your um, oven is like covered in fucking pizza boxes and old tinfoil crap. Like you're just gonna be like, oh, I'll just order fucking yeah. Burger King because it's easier. Um, so yeah, like and you know, it, like Wolfgar, you are a full time. You know, you have the makerspace and you're a full time. You know, you run your prop house. I yeah. I got TNT thing, but I make my own hours and I own Talk Custom and I do some other collaborative things. And yeah, like we have to we have to balance like pretending to be an adult with so much uh, oh man so much with now. running a business and you got like kids too don't you yeah i have dude i, have kids I don't know i don't know life. how you do it like um i don't do much other than this right so like honestly talking to you and on monday nights when i get to talk to people that's great right and like yeah. don't get me wrong i actually have been making some time to play some games um lately which has been really good. That's a mental health thing too. But yeah, I mean, the kids are a little bit older now, so they're they're not quite as much work. Okay. Even they are a lot of work. But still, yeah, um, there's a, just a lot to it, obviously. Um, all right, Allie asked, and I'm yeah. so happy that that I got to meet Allie. She seems very friendly. Um, she is a very friendly person. Um, do you like to plan your cosplays way ahead of time, or are you more spontaneous about what you make? I, I I, I, I mean, both. I think a lot of us would say both to that. You know, like yeah. we all have something we want to make and sometimes we start it or sometimes we wait until it's like, oh shit, there's only two and a half weeks till C2E2. Let's see if we can pop it out. Um, or if we're in a competition or they announce a contest, you know, it, it depends mm-hmm. on the situation, but rarely do I just start something because I'm bored because I don't get bored because I don't yeah. have time to get bored. So yeah. it it just depends. Like if if you have a full time job and you're like, oh, what's what's the next con? Like, and I've only got two hours a night to work on something, then people would start in advance. But it just depends on the situation. Back in the day, I would start way in advance, but now it's like, fuck, what? 
yeah. what good but easy like thing can I build in nine days type of thing? Oh man, you say nine days. I'm talking like two days. Oh yeah, but yeah. A I'm, lot of times, a lot of times it gets down to that deadline for me. I think my fastest was six days. For yeah. CQE2, I did Edward Elric from Full Metal Alchemist in like six days. And I took a day off. So yeah, like five days or something. Yeah. And it, it was great because it had fabric and foam and all mm -hmm. kinds of cool stuff. And it, it was fun and uh, whatever. But um, yeah, it just depends on circumstance and how motivated you are. And like, it's also funny because if you ask someone in 2020, that question as opposed to 2019... It would yeah. be a totally different answer, or you know, because I think it would. I think it would for most people, dude. But fucking, also, like, it depends on stuff like uh, whether people want to do it as a group. With yeah, you, that's, right? that's true. Um, right? Yeah, like when uh, like when Zach Fisher and Jackie Kraft do their mm -hmm. you know Project Ebon Blade or the Barbarians thing, and like Zach Fisher was going to do the aspect of the dragons at BlizzCon last year, but obviously it didn't happen. Like being part of a community that's like, we're all going to do something as a theme like that yeah, helps because yeah. you're all boosting each other. So yes. Um, and it, it pressures you into it either, whether or not you like the pressure is good or bad, you still are into it, right? You'll get it done a lot of times because of that deadline. Yep. Um, so yeah, but like the, the thing about me is like, once I make that decision, like, okay, I'm going to make this and I start, then it's on. Then, like, I don't play video games. I don't talk on the phone. I like sometimes I won't talk to anyone for weeks until it's done. And then all of a sudden, I'll show up at a con or post a picture, and people are like, "When the fuck did this happen?" Like, <laughs> yeah. And that's a great feeling. Um, yeah. Once in a while, I'll think to show work in progress stuff, but sometimes I just don't think about it because I'm so dialed into whatever I'm doing, even if it's like coordinating a cosplay contest or like some people might not hear from me for a while while we're you know raising you know money for the event and building a website and whatever and i don't know it's but i guess like when you've been around for a while and you create content you start building an audience and a community and people start trusting you they trust that whatever you're doing is best for your brand, for the community, for your fellows, your family, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I'm privileged to say that I think I have that trust. Even if I don't talk to some of my old community every day, like I used to, they know I'm doing good things or they see the results of some right. long-term commitments that I'm making. And I, I think you can associate with that. And you've, I mean, you've also been very clear that you have had success in the past year, right? So they can see that too. And they know that there's a reason that that <laughs> happened, right? So maybe if they don't talk to you for a little while, but then you're well, like, oh, yeah, I got this and this and this going on. That's great. What happened last year was, was yeah, like I started posting link or like post like, oh, I just got a sponsorship from this company. And then that <laughs> one, and then, oh, I'm in this documentary. Yeah. And then, oh, I got this free blah, 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 whatever. And then, then I started getting phone calls. Like people weren't texting me or DM. Like they were just calling me like, yo, mm -hmm. how do I do what you're doing? Like people <laughs> that I looked yeah. up to were calling me saying like, sure. How do I do what you're doing? I, I want to get out of this rut and move to a higher level. And I just tell them, and I'm telling them all the same shit that <laughs> props, evil Ted and Bill Duran told me it's all yeah, the yeah. same stuff. Yeah. And I just say, this is what they told me. I did it. It's working. And that's it. Um, uh, since you're so experienced, sorry for laughing. <laughs> I love that you laugh. I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at me, by the way. No, um, I, know, I know. I know. And have mastered your craft. That's also really funny. Um, how much time do you spend in trying to learn something new? Like it all the time. Um, all the time. I'm all like everything I build. I try to add at least a few new elements. Um, you know, like my last big competition built, I'd never worked with EVA foam before. I made a full EVA foam set of, it was a 32 piece armor set with a six foot tall prop. It had four electronic brains controlling like 60 yards of LED light strips. I'd never cast like made molds and resin cast and stuff. I did all that. I never wired. I didn't even know how to solder like wires together, but I figured it out. 
Um, I'd never airbrushed before and I airbrushed the whole thing. I'd never weathered, you know, with the techniques that I used. Um, so there was like, I think eight or nine elements I put into my last costume and I got in as a finalist for a uh, Twitch con. And I was told by one of my friends who was a judge, I won't say who, but she said, you were tied in points with the person that won your category. And I was like, that's crazy that like, I had no clue what I was doing. And they had to basically flip a coin to figure out whether it was going to be me or this other person. And I thought the other person deserved it. I was just happy to be part of it. Um, but uh, I don't feel that experienced. I don't feel like I've mastered anything except failing, which is great. <laughs> which is an important um, skill to master, go fail. Yeah. So, and that's actually how he learns all this stuff down here is he's not afraid of failing. Insane. Right? So... Yeah, go like you want to learn an airbrush, and most of the reason, and I'm gonna, I'm sorry, I'm gonna take this from you. A big reason that I do try to spend time trying to learn something new um, is that I get to fail and I get to learn. Yep. Okay. So, like, my favorite part about that is that I like, I don't know, a year ago, two years ago, I literally hated 3D printing. And I was like, that's dumb. Like, like that's not a maybe, maybe four years ago. Um, I would rather not. So now we do it all the time and there's different techniques and, and not just the printing, but the sanding and the finishing and all that. Um, but we do it one, because we're not afraid to fail, but the two for necessity, like he was saying, he's building his whole costume. He wants tons of lights in it. He wants it to look like a paint job that, from an airbrush. So he had to learn how to airbrush. Yep. So, so you do it out of necessity a lot of times. Which is exactly what they're what you're trying to do to learn something new. Now, whether or not you like plan that into your costume and be like, "Cool, I have no idea how to do these three things," this will make me learn. I would say a lot of people do that, but I don't know that they do it on a completely like as as transparently, right? Is that right? They'll, yeah. they'll say like, "I'm going to do this, and I'm going to learn a lot from it," but not yeah. specifically like "I'm going to learn a lot from this, 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 and this." But that's how they do. That's how you learn. It was just a matter of, uh, I, I wanted to enter in a competition. Um, I knew what I wanted to make and I knew I had to learn those techniques in order to create what the character was. And it was a Zenoger blade master armor set from monster hunter, old school monster hunter. Uh, and I made the big hunting horn, which looks like a giant bass guitar with lights and fur and all this stuff. And, um, there was no other way. I had to learn all of those techniques. Um, it wasn't Aries. I, uh, oh, no, I no. He, this guy that asked the question, Samir, oh, okay. was the guy that did the amazing Aries. I've seen a lot of his work before. Sorry, go on. I, I'm listening to no, you. No, no, that's fine. In fact, if you just found someone for one of your next podcasts, <laughs> and I think that's a good thing. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Allie is going to be you know, doing her magic all over whomever that is right now, which is great. Um, so, yeah. Uh, like, and, th and that was a situation where, you know, like I entered in a contest, I had seven weeks to build it and learn all of these new techniques with zero prior knowledge. Thankfully, nowadays, there's resources specifically for cosplay on YouTube, or I would just call a friend of mine and say, like, why the fuck is the silicone all gl like gluey? <laughs> and they said, what kind of clay are you using? And I said, I'm using like Crayola sulfur based, you know, air dry clay. And they were like, you have to use an oil based or, you know, a plastic based. And I didn't know that. So sure, I made the two starter kits of, you know, smooth on whatever before I learned. And I had to get some Sculpey, whatever clay, like I, I fucked up a lot, but I didn't give up. That, no, that's, actually, that's that's the point. Okay. So a lot of people were scared of doing it because they don't want to fuck up a lot and they don't want to waste those things. But the only way you get past it is you do waste those things. Right. Right. And you, you just try it and you do it. And I, you can watch tutorials and they'll get you so far. Right. And definitely watch them because they'll give you good advice. And that's the reason that an experienced person is saying these things. But in the end of the day, you got to just do it. I, like most people, I teach yeah. people all the time how to make things both in this lab here, in the makerspace, or also in our shop. That's how people learn. Most people, that's how we learn. Yep. Um, um no, I mean, yeah, unless, unless you have like someone that's like, 
like James, if you had a really good friend from high school that really wanted to learn sure. how to do what you do, you could pull them into your shop, take them under your wing and show them step by step. This is how you do it right the first time. So you don't have to make the same mistake, you know, but yeah, that is so uncommon. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. typically people that want to make a costume, they don't fucking ask anyone. They just like, yeah. okay, like I got to go buy fabric and a yeah. glue gun and, you know, a sewing machine and some barge and they just, they just go. And that's how, what, probably 95% of us start. Yeah, and that's the beauty of it, though, okay? Because those people, again, what I said before about the, like, overcoming adversity, those people who have gone through that and the ones that make it out on the other end with a good costume or, like, know what they're doing now, those are the ones that have really, truly learned it. Yeah. Um, there's going to be a lot of people who try it and they fail, and that's fine, and they find something else that they like, hopefully, right? And it's not costuming. But until you try it, you can look at it all day long. Um, and we bring people in the shop too. I'll hire somebody and I'll say like, hey, this is how you do this and this and this. And a lot of it's not the same, right? Like it's we're high, we're building to like make the same product somewhat over and over right. and over. It's not the same as making a costume, but there's a lot of the skills that you transfer. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, still, it's still not the same though as trying, as being like, you know what? I'm going to make this. I want this costume. I'm going to make this costume. It doesn't even have to be costumes. I see this all the time with makers everywhere. Um, they'll be like, I want this board game case for my board game. Like, how do I laser cut this stuff? How do I do this? Yep. And they, but you have to have this final like end result in mind that you want. Yeah. To try to um, um, so you say that my budget and cosplay is basically the amount of, I waste in experiments that don't yeah. work. But yes. Something that's sure. really interesting is, uh, and that's where I was talking about, like, it's easy to fail. And every time you fail, you learn something, which is so valuable. And mm -hmm. um, one thing I always tell people is if you make a mistake, try to fix it. If you can learn how to fix your mistakes, you'll be a way better artist. Some things are yeah. unfixable, obviously, um, but that, that's a really good skill to develop. And it'll also, like, punish you in a certain way. I know that might sound weird. Oh, no, that you don't make the same mistake again, and how we learn. Uh, with sewing, that's something you can do a lot. But um, ah, shit, I had another thought. Um, ah, I think I lost it. But anyway, that that's a really important part or point that I wanted to to point mm -hmm. out. Um, and yeah. making and budgeting for your mistakes because you need to use, like he was saying, he's. Yeah, like, buy extra material, buy extra fabric, okay. buy extra leather. I understand that's gonna be a thing when people when when somebody when I quote somebody on like making a full costume to them for them, I don't just look at exactly how much it's gonna go if it goes exactly right. No, yep. I know the three printer is gonna mess up. I know that some of the fabric is gonna get wasted. So that's the thing, and you, you just gotta you have to know that to budget for it. You're gonna waste stuff, but you're gonna learn, and that's the really valuable thing. Okay, that that's uh, what I was gonna say uh, just yeah. real briefly is. Um, the longer you stick with any creative element or discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it's whether it's sewing, casting, molding, leatherworking, 3D printing, airbrushing, whatever. Like, the better you get at one thing, like, okay, this goes back to, like, when we were all in high school, right? Like, learning is hard. And when you're, you grow up going to elementary school and middle school and high school and college, like, your brain is programmed to learn. But then after that, we fall out of the habit of learning and our brains don't work the same way. And those connections aren't there. And this is a real like, like mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. thing. So the more we practice different creative disciplines, the faster we get at learning and figuring things out as we're doing them. Mm -hmm. And when I started soldering wires for the first time and casting and molding, like I made very few mistakes because my brain was, wired and more prepared for all that creative problem solving and figuring out like I understand how this works and patterns work and 3D prints work so that helps me understand how all these other things could work with it and fog machines and plastazote and you know yeah. LED lights so the more you do the easier everything gets and um, also there's a lot of things that transfer right like adhesives if you get good with one adhesive on one thing you'll be able to use it on other things and yeah no there's never stop learning if you can right? yeah and a lot of, and never stop failing because that's how you learn so I, I feel like this turned into like a psa 
right? Like, uh, oh, let's 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 do this. But it was good. I like the the feel good aspect. Well, of these it. are the questions we're getting, yeah. and I think we're yeah. doing it, it justice like uh, answering I mean, them yeah. properly. But yeah. Um, yeah, I know it's been two full hours, and it's probably time to to wrap. Plus, it, yeah. you're on the East Coast, so it's later for you. But um, it's, it's like it's all right. For me. It's ten o'clock here, but. We typically don't go two hours on here. I could probably talk to you all night. I do. We do but need this to. This happened last time, and I think your moderator was like, "All right, oh, guys, yeah. you know, yeah. you can all yeah. make out with each other later on yeah. your own time." But um, no, I like I need to eat anyway. But um, for sure, for sure. I, Thank I, you so much for being on here. Please again, tell people where they can find you, where sure. they should follow you, all that. Uh, so same deal. Uh, uh, my website is talkcustom.com, just like it's spelled. All of my social media is just at talkcustom, and that's uh, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. Um, uh, most of my content goes up on YouTube for lots of t tutorial stuff, and I'm also the, the marketing coordinator for TNT Cosplay Supply, and I do all of our social media and YouTube videos on that as well. So those are uh, my two primary uh methods but um it's not that hard to get a hold of me and whatever so um thank you so much for having me on i fucking love talking to you and if we end up like if you ever have someone drop out and you're like talk i need someone just call me <laughs> I'll, I'll jump on here and i'll talk to you for an hour and a half and it'll be fine um yeah yeah i, I, I got I ready in like 21 minutes i took a shower set up my green screen and i was ready to go and yeah you have a, i like that you have the 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 green screen back there so you can yep. always click click yeah it's fine it's, everything's good i can even turn the snow off if i want to yeah uh, oh wait just like wisconsin I, there we go yeah, that's now we got pictures of my costumes in the background yeah uh, that's very cool but um yeah thank you so much for having me everyone watching this whether it's uh during the live show or the um the recorded uh video thank you so much for watching i'm really excited that uh, i got to talk about the amazing contest that we're going to put on in May. And there's going to be lots of amazing uh, news coming out about that in the next few days. Uh, otherwise, mm -hmm. I, I want to wish you and your team, James, uh, and your wife, a very wonderful and progressive uh, 2021. I'd love to work on some projects with you. The next time I do a road trip, I'm going to be coming through Indiana for sure. sure. And I want to kiss you right on your <laughs> Right on your beard. Um, right on my beard. That's, it's that's, gonna happen. I, know, I only met you once in real life, and <laughs> yeah, we've done two podcasts. I don't know why you felt like you liked me so much, but I'm into it. So you're good. You're good at speaking on camera. Let's be honest. I do it for the to just hear the voice. That's all it is. <laughs> uh, um, no, man, I appreciate. I yeah. appreciate those. And, and, and Allie, thank you so much for helping uh, coordinate this and taking the load off of James because he, you know, obviously can't do it on his own. <laughs> no, I so, would, uh, you know, thanks yeah, to you, this was possible. Um, but have a wonderful year of podcasts and projects. And I hope everyone watching huge success with all their projects and props and everything that you're doing. I really hope I get to see some of it. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll let you. That that's all I got. James, take it away. Whatever your outro is. I, I would. Uh, I don't have a specific outro, but I would like to thank you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and everybody else watching, and this hairy bearded guy who's on here with me talking, um, for coming and talking and he's listening for two hours. I know it's a long time, but we had lots of good conversation. Um, we're this is the first one we've done that's live on YouTube, so you can find it there. And we are. I just. In case anybody's made it this far, if you made it this far, you might actually care about the show a bit. So we are actually going to go back and take all of the old shows that we did that we're doing on Facebook and we're converting them over and putting them on YouTube. So hopefully be able to pull some sound bites and sound clips and things like that from it as well. But if you want, you can go back. They're all available on Wolf Car Weapons Facebook page, um, but then they will soon be on the Wolf Car Weapons YouTube as well. So, yes, thank you so much for coming, and I will talk to you next time. We're definitely going to have to reschedule this again for another, like, three, four, five months out, and we'll see where you're at there. For sure. Actually, uh, probably before the, the contest, it would – excuse me. It would be good to maybe do, like, a, hey, this is the, yeah. last, this is the last, you know, 
last chance to get in if you want to make something and uh, be part of this amazing uh, event with all I of I have us. a couple of ideas that just went through my brain, but we'll talk about them later as we no. get closer. Dude, but call me whenever. I make my own schedule. You can, you can call me at <laughs> one in the morning as long as I'm not sleeping or on a, on the phone. I will. I, I call you. people all the time at one in the morning. I'm not going to Call me. Awake. Okay. Just all right. Well, we have to, goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Right. Yeah. Bye, folks. Thanks a lot. <clears throat>